chat the live the live video chat oh my god free no, zen don't, zone no, don't don't even, no 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 don't, even don't even entertain indulge. these yeah. fools <laughs> <laughs> that's internet 101 danny yeah come don't out. feed the trolls <laughs> just uh, i'm i'm proud to be tr- trolled upon <laughs> we're worthy of trolling upon. <laughs> i like your attitude <laughs> hey everyone uh, flat out fever uh, here this live. Is the flat out fever formula one podcast etc we're back. We're, We're back. back again. We're back again. It's yeah. Tuesday. I mean, you should expect this by now. Yeah. No, no. Come on. Like a, like a storm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but also like one of those work. named ones. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> El Nino. Los Ninos. So we start this week with breaking. Well, not, not so breaking, but some news about something that we kind of knew for a while that was that, that was coming up, that we, was happening. We knew this news. Yeah. We knew we these reported news. reported on this. These news weren't that new. <laughs> we were the first ones to report upon it I, in this room <laughs> in this room <laughs> and to the few listening at home yeah, the, back, the Renault dude Cyril Abitibul yeah and someone else I forget his name they flew over to Venezuela so yeah, they about, could be, about two weeks ago so they could be told to their faces that <laughs> sorry we're, <laughs> we don't have that much money <laughs> have you seen the price of oil <laughs> yeah yeah it's awful yes so it, it, it's it's this is obviously part of like, uh, you know, repercussions of, of Venezuela being a, the whole economy depending on oil, and because oil is now in, you know, it, it, one of the lowest prices it's been for a while. Hmm. I saw a chart uh, yesterday. I forget who created it. Some redditor, I guess, some tweeter. Hmm. But I was it was a chart of track tracking the Venezuelan currency hmm. from the time. Maldonado won the Spanish Grand Prix in pre-2012 yeah. until now. Uh-huh. It's lost. It's about one-fifteenth of its value or something. It was about uh, 60 pesos per US dollar and now it's somewhere around 960-ish. I think. Oh, man. Something like that. But my, my question is, if oil's so cheap, how come racing's so expensive? <laughs> <laughs> You're only allowed to burn 100 kilograms per race. Yeah, but doesn't this go for like all the traveling? I guess it's like in the off season, so they're not traveling a lot. But you know, yeah. But in, in, <laughs> the oil industry needs them to burn more gas. Oh. <laughs> it's economic stuff. All kinds of stuff. Oil's, and, oil's cheap now. And uh, Pastor Maldonado's main sponsor, obviously, was Pereza, which is the uh, state oil, state owned oil company mm. in Venezuela. They they right. don't have money. They haven't had money for a while. Like you said, they're running out of money. They're hemorrhaging money everywhere. Uh, His pal Hugo Chavez died, unfortunately, died. of some sort of the new government is induced cancer yeah, or something. Some kind of something. Um, <laughs> is uh, this the Watchmen? <laughs> I know. <right? laughs> this is real life. This is real life. This is Formula One. <laughs> um, so yeah. Anyway, long story short, Paso Maldonado. <laughs> Not in F1 anymore. The yeah. nicest guy. You know. Everyone if, if says that. Nikki, the nicest guy. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, please, please, please skip us out. I mean, All right. We've got a little video here. Of, of th- you can just throw, yeah, throw us on what we talk about him. It's, it's, it's so funny because people, well, like journalists always say, you know, he's the nicest guy. But it's because then he goes on track and he like he, he does something like, there we go. Like that. Oh. <laughs> Oh my he, God. he caused a lot of accidents. He caused a lot of accidents. He was, and then he was also in many other accidents that, you know, this the jury still uh, whether or not it was his fault. But then, like, it, they kept like he, he he. I think in one occasion. Oh, went, this is the holy this one looks shit! Like, watch, get out of the way. That's in slow motion too. <laughs> oh my God. What? Sorry is for, it, for the vi- for the video viewers. We're looking at a Maldonado crash compilation. Oh yes, this is only a handful oh, wow. of his F one crashes too. There's only eight or nine in this video. Oh my god! He's, he's why done, why done like lot. is he just like too aggressive? Like what's his deal? He is very aggressive. He's, doesn't he's doesn't dr- look. He dr- he's he's driving too much on the limit. Sorry, he was very aggressive. Oh, he's just like not even caring. You he's gotta like, talk about him in the that guy. past tense now. 
Oh, that's yeah, true. That's yeah. right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I think people give him a lot of shit. People do give people him a lot do of give shit. him a lot of shit. Yeah. But you got you got to admit though, he knows how to crash a car. Like, look at that. <laughs> yeah. yeah He's like, boom, like, out like, of my way. This guy couldn't race anymore. He he continued the race, and that that's the point. That's what a lot of people complain is that he sometimes got into accidents that were very like the, the outcome of it was way worse for the people. Yeah, that he crashed. Look this. at this. Look, at this. this is hilarious. Okay, stop stop this for a second. Pauses. So this is. <laughs> <laughs> so they took him to Caracas, the capital city of Venezuela, to do like a, a, a like a, just like a quick run around the, yeah. the, the some part of downtown just to show the Venezuelans like hey here this it's is, like yeah here's an F one car like up close whatever like teams do this kind of promo stuff all yeah. over the place, and the best was this come up just play it. In front of his home crowd, in front of his adoring fans, he goes and says, oh, boom. this is what I'm known for. This is what I'm famous. <laughs> That's what he told the crowd. He <laughs> destroyed his rear suspension and put the car over the sidewalk. He bounced over the sidewalk for the listeners. Guy. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, look yeah. at that. And at this point, that I was, think Esteban Gutierrez is, is saying something like, what was that? <laughs> Because he didn't yeah. see it. He ended up upside down. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. He could have dated it. But boom. Yeah, it's like, I mean, it's it like he had a little like, destruction. bulldozer underneath yeah, the him. The maldozer. The maldozer. Yeah. It's That's why he there. got that name. If you look in, in the links, there's there's another compilation there that goes back to his GP2 days. And a lot more of the uh, F1 crashes as well. Like, you get a, we'll, we'll, a we'll, sense we'll post for the watchers. In, in the links. It's just on YouTube. If you look up, actually, if you type uh, on YouTube, at least on, <laughs> over here, if you type Pastor Maldonado, like the first like automatic guess is Pastor Maldonado crash compilation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, these these whoever created these got a lot of views yesterday. <laughs> and, hey, and hey, listen, uh, the guy. And, 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 you know, you, you can always like bring the, the the argument about that, like, oh, he won, he did win a race, and he actually did win the race that he won, pretty much fair and square. Right, you didn't like just bulldoze people out of the way. No, and he he, he won from from bold position, so he qualified oh, wow. first as well. Uh, that so was, he's actually like a pretty competent driver. Uh, and, and and that was the argument is that like maybe when he's on, he or you know, the, the, and Claire Williams tried to like really find a way. To like activate the Pastor Maldonado genius yeah. that he's that he was supposed to be, or at least he was supposed to be a more than competent driver. Mm. He's, 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 he, that's what he was supposed to be. He won um, a bunch of uh, international like uh, single seater championships, including the GP2, which is how how you get into F or like it's GP2 was a series designed by Bernie Ecclestone and uh, freaking the, the guy from uh, <laughs> yeah the puppet strings. <laughs> Ecclestone and that Italian guy. What's his name? Uh, he's uh, he was Alonso's manager. Uh, Flavio Briatore. Oh, yeah. yeah so e so Ecclestone and Briatore basically part. came up with the with the idea of GP2 as like to be like the series that would be most like F1 and kind of like a like a gateway to F1. Right. For your for younger drivers, <sighs> right? Um, and Pastor Maldonado won the GP2 championship, so he had he had the credentials. But mm. also, you could also say that maybe. His his year in GP two like wasn't like oh you know necessarily like overflowing with ta with talent right <laughs> but let, let me just I, I pulled this up uh, this fact here his final year in GP two in two thousand ten <clears throat> he was there for a couple of years he won six consecutive races and took ten wins in the season in his last year which is a record that still stands yeah so there was a he, there was some, some promise. Stuff, right? Yeah, and, mm. and and not anybody is a Grand Prix winner. I think there's only like, it's it's the, the list is you know since for, since the beginning of Formula One, there's only been like 120 something or you know 100 less than 200 Grand Prix winners. So oh, he's right. he's yeah. He's, yeah. he's in that list. Wow. So it, it's still pretty exclusive out of like the thousands that have competed. Mm -hmm. He he is one of also one of three drivers to have their anthem played once. There's only three drivers that have that have only had been the only winner from their country, which is him, Venezuela, uh, Kvyat, and Vern. Single anthems. Really? Yeah. Wow. Wait, what, Ver Vern is statistic. French. Oh, sorry. Ver oh, sorry. Gee, I was gonna say no. Fr yeah. French anthem has been heard like, a lot on the top step. Ver Verstappen. Oh, Verstappen. Netherlands. From the net. From the, uh, Netherlands. Netherlands, Russian, and sorry, Magnussen's also Denmark. Those are the single anthems and Venezuela and Poland, sorry. <laughs> it's a handful. Oh, with uh, Kubica. All right. Yeah. Um, 
But it, it, Paul, you know, yeah, Poland might have been twice actually. But it, it, he he was a nice anyways, guy. I'm sure. This is a very small club of people because there's you know like from Britain there's anthems being played. Oh yeah, I think it, like in uh, Germany as well. There have been more uh, British Grand Prix winners than any other nationality. Yeah, right. There's been a couple of Germans. Uh, but yeah, mo- most countries that have winners, there's a, a bunch of them. Yeah. Yeah, America too. I think America is or, I think in or second or least, third place for or the at most. Or at least a, 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 a um, multiple races that have got won by one person. Like Colombia, I guess. Because Colombia has, has only had uh, Juan Pablo Montoya, but he won a few races. Right. That, yeah. yeah, that's true. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I was going to say, though, surprisingly, America is one of the top. Even though there hasn't been an American team for 30 years now. This is the 30th year. Yeah. There hasn't been an American driver for a long time either. But they did. They had uh, Dan Gurney who... Yeah, they're in the top top of most anthems played ever. From America, back in the, the American day. American anthem, yeah. Because uh, there were... Yeah, there were competent American... Like, there were Americans that were into F1. There used to be. There used to be. There used to be more. What fun. happened? America. Yeah. Oh, used Rossi's to be great. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, we're, we're not going to hear the Venezuelan anthem for quite a while, I don't believe. You know what? I'm not going to miss it. And actually, <laughs> <laughs> and actually, I'm not going to miss Maldonado. Come on, Maldonado. Like, no, come on. I don't, yeah, it reminds I, me I, of I, like a, a George W. Bush. But it wasn't, he didn't have like a, you know, like a, like a triumphant, like, you know, like no, cool not, story oh. that like you could rally behind, like you know, underdog kind of. From, no, he, he he was he was backed by an by an oil rich country. Uh, he 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 was there for a lot of time, like not by merit. He was mm. he was there because he of came money. with one of the largest sponsorships of all time. It's in any sport and and personal sponsorship. Even still, you know, like oh, he, he occupied a seat that would have been well worth a different driver. I'd say. But yeah. he gave us well, the laughs. He gave us the laughs. He gave us and the for funnies. that, we will never forget. <laughs> Absolutely. Crash Donato, Maldonado. Maldozer. Maldozer. The guy who crashes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, uh, every single permutation of that. Yeah. I, but you know what? I'm, <laughs> really, I'm really glad, too, because it opened the door for K-Mac. his replacement. Yes. Boom. He's, he's being replaced with a far more marketable guy, a cooler guy, younger and, guy, and a, a more, more talented, talented guy. talented driver. At yeah. least, like, yeah, I... You know what? Even if he has, if he spent a year out of, outside of F one, and a lot of people like in, in uh, the people the ger- thought it was the death of his career. Yeah, well, the, yeah. Journalists say like, hey, like you know, uh, if if you spend a year out of F one, that like that could be like the worst thing. That you it's could the do. worst thing ever. Yeah, you're gonna but, get so stale. But but like actually, but actually, there's been uh, people that have come back to F one and like done reasonably well after like a year or even more than a year away. Who? Do you have a list? Alonso, for example. He was... Oh, he was up for it? Well, he had, like, a, a uh, an appearance in F1, and then, like, he didn't do anything for a year, and then he joined uh, Minardi. Right? There was a uh, rumor of him taking a sabbatical this year, too. Right? Exactly. I think that K-Mag was kind of hanging on to that. Kimi idea. Raikkonen, when he when he made his, came, uh, his comeback, after, like, doing rally and whatever for, like, a few, oh, a few yeah, that's, years... That's true. Like, he, he, when he came back, Team Lotus... He was pretty good, right? Like he he was winning races and whatever. Um, Michael Schumacher, he didn't do well, he, didn't he didn't do, do super great. well when he came back. <laughs> that great. He kept racing. Uh, uh, Romain Grosjean. That that's very true. Yeah. So so he's set to make a huge comeback. Ex- exactly. So there, there there is still like you, it's not like it's the 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 end of your career, and it's pretty the, cool because look at this. Look at the date of this. Go scroll down. The thing with Kevin Magnussen though is that he wasn't really racing last year, whereas. Most of the guys we just talked about were racing in their off years. I mean, like Michael Schumacher was no, racing motorcycles. Uh, Alonso was told to like sit down and like just oh, be a test okay. driver or something. At but the same yeah. time, though, K. Mag said he spent most of the year, many months in the factory, right? And now he's far advanced on engineering from where he was before. That's awesome. He understands a lot more, I guess, of the setup of the car. And but look, he now he's he, taking it with him. He he said it well. Like he he posted this. Yeah, last, this is a, well, more over than a year ago. Yeah. yeah. And he basically saying, "I'll be back," and he's back. I saw this floating around yesterday. Yeah, he, he actually did so it. He's he's Danish, right? Mm-hmm. And um, in the first race of 2014, right when he went, yeah, in his year, McLaren, he got the third place. He got mm-hmm. to the podium on his first, like, on his debut race. The rest of the year, the McLaren wasn't competitive, and like you could. You could see that, like maybe he he wasn't giving enough tools to like show how good he was, but you could see moment of brilliance is there where like he quali- he out qualified button and he he outraced uh, 
uh, Jensen Button. Quick, and quick fact. Yeah. That was the best Formula One driver debut in 18 years. He, he matched uh, Villeneuve. Nice. Jacques Villeneuve, 18 years before in 96. Um, uh, he did the same thing, actually. He played second in Australia. Nice. On his first race in F1. Yeah, and, and, and really, I mean, so, so some would have said that Kevin Magnussen even would have been a better choice to keep than Jensen Button when Alonso joined the team. Mm. Like some, some would some have say, argued that. Some say that. Yeah, some, some argue that. But anyway, I'm glad to see him back in F1. Maybe he's going to be a bit more uh, prepared. It might take him like a few races to like fully get the, the hang of it. But I think that Kevin Magnussen, he's young enough. He's like... He's got. He's already had the exposure to the F1 world with mm. a top team that had top money. I think he's gonna be. Able he's to been exposed it. to the way that some of the top teams with top money treat people. Exactly. As well. Yeah. So I, th- I think he's he's ready for for a comeback, and I'm looking forward to see him race. Because I think if any, even if Renault is just gonna be a midfielder team, he's gonna like. There's gonna be some good fights. Imagine like this guy and uh, Perez. Yeah, and him he, and his teammate, even yeah. even if they get to fight, right? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. him, yeah, him and Perez as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it, l- before we talk about his comeback for a second, let's talk about his how he got kicked out because McLaren kind of treated him like a piece of, sh- piece of shit. Yeah. So I want to talk in a minute about his sponsorship, okay? Which yes. is by a man named Anders Hoch Poulsen. Is he is he Danish? He yeah he is nice. Do you know that <laughs> actually? Be- I think he <laughs> might be the richest Dane on. Uh, th- when he when he placed uh, third in Melbourne that one time he apparently broke the internet in Denmark like there was <laughs> yeah because <laughs> so much traffic yeah so much traffic that like it actually like like the whole country went down for a little <laughs> bit I think or Facebook in the whole country went down wow <laughs> powerful yeah so part of um well b- basically all of this guy's wealth. He's a billionaire worth this. He's Anders. estimated at five point eight billion dollars, um, which is above Ecclestone. Yes. On on the world richest people list, he's a fifty or sixty people above Ecclestone, I believe. But he's rich from textiles, from selling clothes. Oh shit! His parents started a company called Bestseller in nineteen seventy five, I think it was, and uh, built it up, and then he he exploded the company. So now now he's a billionaire, but. One of McLaren's big sponsors was Hugo Boss, and right. one of yeah, and one of well, the main sponsor behind Kevin Magnussen was a company called Jack and Jones, which yes. is I guess a European clothing company. Yes, and Hugo Boss had a clause in their sponsorship contract with McLaren that they couldn't accept any other textile sponsorships at all. Mm. Right, so part of, I guess sort of his money wasn't any good there, type of thing. And the team let him go on his 23rd birthday last year, on his birthday by yeah, email, yeah. by sent by Ron Dennis's personal assistant. Oh so my god! So they didn't even god. get it from the boss. He got it from his boss's assistant. Her name is Justine Bowen. Hey, Justine, for anybody that wants to know. Hey Justine, I just need you to come here. You know, oh, uh, you know, thanks for those reports. Uh, coffee was great. Oh, and by the way, I need you to fire this kid. Yeah. <laughs> On his birthday. <laughs> <laughs> we sincerely regret to inform you. <laughs> picture from he, this dude's private he jet. He tweeted a picture from a jet with a oh. black wing. He he tweeted a picture basically of an airplane window with a black wing. Actually, and, and it's and it's, so, it's funny because in the reflection of that of that yeah, picture, you can see a few beers. Yeah, you can. See. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, actually you can pull that up. You know, well, uh, it doesn't really matter anyway. So some internet detective took that picture, realized that this guy Anders owns a private jet. It's a Dassault Falcon that is black, <laughs> and that he is Kevin Magnuson's sponsor, and that that plane was on its way to I guess the Renault factory to discuss his uh his drive oh my god oh my god so this, uh, this, this ri- rich ass anders if you want to sh- throw his face up there the he's kind of he seems like a kind of a private guy i found this and two other portraits this is for an, a book about him or something but it seems like he keeps kind of hidden behind keeps, keeps in the shadow but uh it's he's estimated that he's he's contributed 30 to 40 million dollars so far to kevin magnuson's careers starting from i guess from way back when he was wow. a teenager yeah because he's only 23 right now well he really wants uh well like, yeah but 
K Mag is marketable. You see, like, he, th- 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 there's some return to the money there, and maybe that's like his pet project. He wants to like bring more uh, more attention to Denmark. Absolutely, by sponsoring uh, a young driver. Why not? One Why not? one big point about Renault taking Kevin Magnussen over Maldonado. Yeah, is Re- Renault is obviously backing Kevin Magnussen. They want to build him up because they chose him, right? Yes. Maldonado wasn't chosen. He sort of, he sort of came with the team. Mm-hmm. He was tied to their debt and I mean paying off their debt and everything. Yeah. So they got they got rid of him and chose Mal- him. Maldonado was an asset. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> one or two more quick facts about this rich ass. He's the second lar- one of the largest landowners in Europe, private landowners. Oh, He's over 150,000 acres in Scotland alone. I oh believe. my god. Uh, he lives on uh, something like a 400-year-old in a castle on an estate. I was just that about was owned, to say that. Yeah, it was owned by a Danish nobleman originally. <laughs> he owns uh, somewhere near the, I think, hit the border of his country. There's He owns a reserve for wolves and bears. It's just a huge forest that he bought and pr- put a protection on it for wolves and bears. To That's kind of cool. cool. Yeah, and, yeah. And deer there. I support that. Big game. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, he's like I thought a cool he was just like some rich douche in a, in a castle. I mean, that's so <laughs> Mo- cool, but... Most of most of the bears. land that he owns, especially in Scotland, that, that I looked at was uh, all protected forest land. He's not exploiting any of it. Wow, cool. He's just a nice guy. Good for him. Just a nice billionaire. You I mean, get the flat-out fever thumbs of approval. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks for being cool as a billionaire. <laughs> that's, yeah. I mean, it, no, it, yeah. It's, it's, it's going to be good. I mean, I'm actually... I'm looking for. I find that the more I think about it, I look forward to the uh, the midfield of <laughs> of this coming year. There's gonna be some good shit happening there with the manor probably getting in there. Yeah, Haas, Haas, yes, Haas exploding, right? Yeah, Gutierrez. Did you oh, see the pictures of, uh, of 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 the Haas factory or whatever, and like how like clo- like it looks like a like a like a normal, like, super, super, pro. super pro, super yeah. pro. Yeah, see if you can pull it up quick. They bought. Uh, I guess Ferrari stepped up their. Um, I don't know. Can't find it. Hang on a second. No, I got it. 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 <clears throat> uh, yeah, Haas looks like they're legit. They've got all their stuff together. We just got to see what they do on track, right? But mm. it's you know what? Uh, I I think it. I think they're actually gonna do uh, pretty well. They have, like you said, they have all the elements. Um, what's what's uh, buddy Ferrari buddy from Mexico? Uh, <laughs> uh, Gutierrez. I th- I never thought that he was a bad F1 driver, I th- but he's he's gonna be competent. He's gonna be like you know be able to keep up. I um, guess he's still got some of that slim money behind him. Yeah, yeah, and that's yeah that's what's gonna prop yeah. him up. But um, and the Mexican Grand Prix is there now exactly. to support. I guess and why not? There's and, enough support for two drivers and, there. And there's also <laughs> like a huge uh, uh, Latin American community or you know Mexican community in the states. Why wouldn't you like you know go for that market? It, you know, as a, as an easy market to acquire. I mean, whether it's whether they're legal or and not, with, they're still <laughs> with, there. Yeah, they're still, yeah they're still gonna watch the TV. I guess with the Mexico success, Brazil has always been popular. Argentina is really looking to get their race going again because they they've hosted yeah. um, Argentina's hosted Formula E the past two years successfully. Yeah, I guess there's enough room for they want to bring Formula One back. They're talking about it. Oh, for sure. Yeah, look, just scroll through these through these pictures here. Yeah. Are these were those photographs or is it, is it that clean that it looks fake? <laughs> I guess yeah, it's, it's like some that sort of clean. CG render. It's just so clean yeah. that it looks fake. It's all their brand new tech. Their, I guess there's a tech bay, engineering desk. Yeah, but like some of, some of the people like look look at this. There's a yeah, shiny so, yeah. ass toolbox. Yeah, yeah the, there's the, their radio booth. I guess the the, the, the pit trackside wall. The pit, uh, wall. pit wall thing. Yeah. 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 So like yeah, obviously like they have everything in place. I mean, I I couldn't even tell you if uh, Renault has all this shit in place yet. You know, Whew, fancy. Know. Yeah, for the telemetry. Yeah. You know what they're not doing though? What? Selling T-shirts on their website. <laughs> <laughs> I actually really? I actually looked it up. I was like, I'd like to have like a Haas like nice polo shirt. <laughs> like, that'd be super cool. Like I was like, I could get a uh, Ferrari one, but nah, I'm, a, I'm an underdog kind of guy. <laughs> nice. Cool. This is really neat. But yeah, look at this. That is, is a big it? ass factory. Yeah, that's wow. a big facility, and this is this is their their deal in the states. Um, yeah, in Carolina, in North Carolina. Uh, keep going. I think they show like Canapolis. Like, one of like the actual one of their machines actually working, or some dude actually at the machine. Yeah. Oh, these guys. Good. Look at them fake working. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
yeah oh but for the listeners yeah so see there we go so obviously if you have the advantage of having these super expensive has machines already given to you mm. i think that that's going to give them like some because it's not just this like they have like a, some sort of 3d printer shit and the other picture yeah like just oh, doing dude. something if you have access to this kind of technology and can produce parts quick and, and high, very high quality high performance parts i think that that could actually give him a like like an actual chance man mm. i think i think that has is going to be very yeah. exciting yeah uh, i already said i want a t-shirt <laughs> um, don't exist that's, that's Magn- the reason- there <clears throat> and and uh yeah everything is going to going to be happening then the development of the force india yeah. uh, we, we, we we expect what, much from them what's their um from last year like how force india how do they end yeah like they, they had the, like six, I think, or something. Yeah, it, still, like I don't. Yeah, Middle out of the, the teams, pack, sort of. They were after, um, uh, after Williams. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. So that's that's pretty good, right there. Yeah. No, totally. The, the difference in budget is enormous. Yeah. Right. Like, Force India was supposed to be a team that was going to be struggling, but with money. Right. And they actually like pulled through, like and, and they, right, they got some right, pretty decent right. points this year. Yeah. Actually, well, last year they got some pretty decent points, which means pretty decent money this year. Mm. Right. Yeah. So it's 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 looking good for for Force India, you know, despite everything, all the troubles that's ha- that are happening to uh, VJ Malia. But uh, I guess we'll talk about that later. Mm-hmm. Yep. We're back. Baku. We're back. We're Baku. We're Baku. Baku to the future. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, let's look at this. Let's look at this video here. Somebody made this about uh in the past. I don't know. I found it in the past week anyway. Yeah, let's watch this. So anyone watching, we're um we're looking at a video made I think partly by maybe Street View or somebody put a camera on their car. Going around the Formula One track in Baku, or what is going to be, which will be the street circuit. Yeah. Ooh, neat. Well, it's, it's it's a YouTube but video. We're gonna put a link in the comments or maybe you want to put the sound out. I don't know. There, there's the outline on video. Yeah. The sound off. Yeah. There's just some fake fake noises. It's not an actual F1 car. Oh right, because it's gonna be. Okay, it's right. gonna oh, be this is clockwise. insane. So yeah. It's a, Oh man, this left turn. It's the first corner. The, the f- are coming off the really wide front straight. Going back, 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 back. Up to the north part of the circuit here. Now, this is going to be one of the one of the highest speed zones, right? Uh, I think the front will be. Yeah. The, it, this the, this circuit is going to have like a nice long straight. And they're going to be able to actually reach top speed. Yeah, this, this part too. This is going to curve around here a bit. This is heading towards, this is the, the back straight, I guess, heading towards the old city. So there's a chicane, another short straight. Yeah, so, well, I just turned the sound off. So just, somebody just kind of put a dash cam on their regular car and then uh, filmed this. The backwards some, stuff kind of just drives me crazy. Yeah. <laughs> like what? Yeah, I guess some of these are one-way streets that are going to be raced backwards, so the video is sort of reversed from uh, the back of the car. These, so here's the old types. city. There's the narrow the narrow section going uphill. Chicane, oh. that's the cir- cir- corners 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. One of those silly London cabs that they brought. <laughs> yeah, there's one of the London cabs. So now we're at the the third sector of the circuit, that the sort of curvy sector. You're going to sort of swoop around here and go back downhill, back towards the water. And okay, There's and a that, lot of sun in the video That's going to be that, that crazy straight where they're going to be able to like just really gun This it. is down, down, downhill cobblestone back onto cobblestone yeah the yes. uphill oh, wait, we, we don't have any more uh, races on cobblestone anymore it, like no. monaco kind of used to be like this but monaco has since been resurfaced obviously so this that, is going to be another challenge for cobblestone i think might be in the probably three four hundred years old too as as old as the walled city is well for i think i think even older than that man so here yeah, the video kind of seems to be stuck in traffic but there, there's a little swoop here before it left and then down to the main boulevard which is something like 14 meters wide or something but you can like gonna be like eight eight cars wide or something coming down the main straight here but you can see what they were saying though that there's not going to be a lot oh, of room for uh grandstands 
No, there's not. But it's gonna look cool. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's gonna be like yeah, it's gonna look for cool for TV for sure. And, and if you, you and if you oh, live yeah. around here, then you know what I mean. Like then you yeah, you're set. Same type of thing as Monaco. Anyone that has a yeah. balcony and that lives downtown here, wow. and it, sure, sure, all sure. these condos here are gonna be filled up with the balcony so th- that was the end of the, the front straight there wow very that's cool very cool to see really right? cool right right the most corners of any track the second I'm longest really track one of the fastest yeah, it's gonna, tracks it's gonna be second long. or third fastest track second longest track well the most corners no, i believe 22 no, not corners. necessarily fastest in terms of average speed but like, no one of the quickest sectors yeah. mexico i guess is the new fastest because they don't have any air <laughs> 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 yeah but yeah you it's pretty cool, right? Yeah. Now, how Those does cool how does a, co- uh, a a Formula One car handle cobblestone? Well, they're gonna have to do some some crazy like stiff suspension, to right? Be sure. Yeah. Yeah, because so. it's gonna be all bumpy. You're gonna lose. Pull, some pull up the I tweet imagine. too. Like, we might as well look at that quickly. Ted Kravitz, I think, is in Azerbaijan right now because he tweeted something the other day too from his hotel room. But uh, expand that that main picture there. He's got a photograph basically standing on the road on the narrow part we just looked at in the video. That's so amazing. you can see the width. There's sort of an SUV sitting near that intersection. It's something six or seven meters wide. Hey, they're, they're the cars are going to be two meters wide Dude, on re- cobblestone uphill. They're in a really corkscrew. pushing like the. Oh, so they're going uphill here. Yeah, they're going to go up wow. uphill here to the back. The top part of the circuit is sort of, I think, just around that corner. I think. I and think then they head back down. See, if if, the cr- if crashed, or it, will, it would have still been in no, the one. He would have taken this t- this turn. Yeah, that, that's no, going to be further good. narrowed, right? That's going to be <laughs> piled up with armcos and those rubber yeah. thing, those rubber gray things for sure. Yeah, but I don't know. Pastor would just have a way of just finding yeah. it and just launching himself. Oh, yeah. They're going to have to protect that. that this that wall is something the UNESCO World Heritage protected. <laughs> blah blah. Nobody can even look at it <laughs> look. no no please sir don't look at it yeah, it's just historically protected I, I, I would imagine the sound and vibration of formula one cars going up this and, through that tunnel oh my like, god it's gonna like, be awesome like who lives here i want to make friends with them they're so gonna, yeah, so, so, gonna get shattered either somebody <laughs> lives there or it's somebody's office right like, yeah somebody's somebody's occupies that window that's oh my amazing. god yeah that's so cool wow phenomenal We'll look, I've yeah, never looking, been more excited. Yeah, looking forward to this race for sure, even if it actually like. Sorry, now, can you guys tell so, me a bit about like the history? Uh, because it's a new race, right? Yes. First time. Yeah. First time. But and it's never been raced before? Never. Never, never no. even in the country. There's been no. a, it a seems so race. crazy to me that they would pick this style in a city um, as opposed to like the big sort of American circuits, the newer ones. Like they're American all, like, doesn't have money. Yeah. And they're not interested. That's the, Azerbaijan that's the, yeah. is interested in changing the perception of their entire country, right? Right. They, they've got a condo boom going. They're promoting. They just held the... We were talking earlier about the uh, Eurovision Awards. Right. They right. bought a thousand of these London black cabs to pop, to populate yeah. their city. They re- replaced their entire taxi system well, to, they, they, to be they, more they modern. Really wa- they really want to show the world that, like, hey, like, we're not, like, some, like, backwards, like, you know... Uh, yeah. middle eastern country like yeah. we actually like have more in common with the the city is built in a beautiful bay they have an amazing beach there on the front wow you see there's a lot of condos and offices going up so they're having some kind of this, boom there but this, the story of these places in, the, in the world man. historical city as well yeah but okay so you know they used to be very much like what we consider like you know what they're surrounded by countries like you know syria yeah mm-hmm. um iran etc cetera, etc cetera, right mm-hmm. they are uh they are around that same neighborhood uh place like uh, azerbaijan but also uh, the country of georgia mm. but they do have a distinct sort of europeanish feeling because these were places that were uh, occupied by uh the crusaders mm. so that that's that's where the the european um, connection kind of comes from when the Crusaders came. Like these were like big bases or whatever. Like the, right, like, right. So people from Europe do, do have a link. To I was going to say the architecture reminds yeah. me of yeah. uh, a bit of Europe. And I think that, and that's what that's what they're kind of trying to like bring back. Like hey, like you know we we are sort of hey, Europe we're cool. Too. We're, we're, we're Europe we're too, cool. sort of in a way. <laughs> come on, come on, guys. Uh, but <laughs> so neighboring countries, it's attached to Russia, Georgia, Armenia, and Iran, and Iran to the south. Yeah, really right. close to Turkey. No, actually, with Turkey. Oh, well, uh, Turkey's yeah, in between. They sort of have this, uh, there's a bit of a bit missing here. 
Armenia has a little strip, but I guess Azerbaijan is split in half. It's got an exclave. Anyway, yeah, it's, <laughs> yeah. it's it, just just try just, just the fact that we're talking about it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that, that, that yeah, that's this, what they're going for. This is the whole yeah. thing. The whole thing. That's all. That's what they want. Yeah, just awareness about Azerbaijan. You know, they have a bit of oil money right now, so mm-hmm. that's that's why they can afford to do these things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the thing is that it uh, to me, if you ask me, I think that a race in a city is probably uh, more sustainable in the long term mm-hmm. than a big purpose made track right like, absolutely like the, like the u.s yeah. ones the, it's hard to get them right and a lot of people don't like them because they sometimes like because of the sharp turns and 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 the way that like city streets are meant to be you know for tra- you know for transportation right not for racing mm. um a lot of the of the city circuits that that they've come up with in recent f1 memory are not great like remember valencia they it yeah. never it never um like they never encourage closed racing they never encourage it was flat. a lot of overtaking this is they need to put either in a city like this or a part of a city like this similar to monaco or any of the classic circuits elevation yeah it's mm. huge man the, yeah. having this hill this is the back uphill circuit and the back part of the circuit and then you come around and the third sector a huge part of it is downhill you go back down to the sea the front straight is on the waterfront I, I think it's the, like someone, the main boulevard of the city. Right? I think someone was listening to us. <laughs> yeah. I really do because this is like what we asked for. Yeah, like, and they moved this to be a sunset race now too. Which oh, but the 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 reason I really wanted to talk about Baku this week something disappointing. Last week, the calendar, the full season calendar was published for race times. Right, right. and there was a sort of gentlemen's agreement between the Baku European Grand Prix and the Le Mans twenty four hour race uh, that they wouldn't interfere. That's why it was moved to a night race. Oh, uh, okay. And the race here was set to start after the checkered flag of the Le Mans race, but now they're going to overlap. This race was moved forward one hour, so earlier in the day, one hour, okay. so that to cause it to not end in full darkness. But it's going to overlap the Le Mans race for one hour, which is kind of shitty. Then they just yeah. announced that sort of underhandedly yesterday. Sort of like, oh yeah, by the way, oh yeah, by the way, it's gonna be a one hour earlier. <laughs> but yeah, that's the excuse or reason. I don't know. Like, they're gonna save some money on lighting or, or yeah, what? probably like, because probably. I guess the the Singapore race they talked about it cost something like two million dollars to light it or something or millions of dollars. It's it's they have to use a lot of lights, but to, not ending in full darkness. It doesn't really make sense. Or well, is that th- just like? To be cool. to be distinct, I guess, because you know, no, like I think, I think, I think, I think Abu Dhabi ends in starts in daylight, ends in I full think, darkness. I think that, Singapore yeah, but, is but they all, can, all in full darkness. Yeah, but they can, like, they, they have the infrastructure. If these people, if yeah. if if Baku thought that they were gonna be doing a daytime race, they didn't give uh, it. They probably didn't buy enough uh, of the lights that they needed, and maybe it's a bit too late to like plan around to ha- to like put these okay. lights. Maybe they were planning to light parts of the track at night, anyways, to have like Monaco. People are out in the circuit at night, you know, walking around talking about the race, and have, it's like a street party for the weekend, right? And type of thing because it's lit. Yeah, right. Yeah, they maybe. obviously have street lights in Azerbaijan too because it's yeah, but they're as, not. A, a they're not. They, they probably don't meet like the FIA requirements. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, th- I, th- I it's think it's like downtown. They have lights there. Whatever. But. To be honest, like as much as I as I do like the idea of the Le Mans twenty four hour race. There's only very few people that are gonna be watching that for 24 hours, like the the whole freaking race. Mm. At, like you you yeah. watch you watch the highlights, and if you are like really like really into it, then maybe uh, you can you know what you can watch the Grand Prix and then download the files later. Right, <laughs> or if you got yeah. two televisions yeah. or a remote control, yeah, you can just switch between them. That's right. Yeah. Is that a big deal? No. A lot, I think a lot of people that watch are fans of a driver too, so you only really have to watch a third of the stints if you're really following one guy. True. Yeah. No one's watching a 24 hour. You know. As much but, as. But I understand. Like, you know what I people mean? People like, are watching the highlights and are there and yeah. camping out, and it's a festival. And, and and you know what? And one day I would like to go the, and, once and, and, you know, and be there for a Le Mans. Like, I think it, it would be fun to just be like here and there, but you're not there the whole 24 hours. No, that's yeah. stupid. You just. It would have. Aside from 
Baku wouldn't have been a night race if they held this in the afternoon, like most races, 1, 2 p.m., mm. right? And then they occupy one or two hours in the middle of the Le Mans race, and then they still have the full, like, last two, final two, three hours yeah, exactly. of Le Mans would be free. But I don't know. Anyways, that's the way it's going to happen. Mm. They're going to overlap. There's but exciting th- nonetheless. Yeah. No, yeah. no. It's, it's, seriously, there's, there, there's no way that, I mean, even if it's like Mexico, the way that me- the Mexican race wasn't that, like, wasn't, you know, a super good race, mm-hmm. it that not a lot happened. Even if it's the same, I'm, and, and not a lot happens in this race, just, just the fact that, like, come on, look at this. It's gonna, it's, it's gonna be exciting. And you know what? Maybe they're gonna do a pretty good, a pretty mm-hmm. good job, job of putting a good show. You know? Yeah, I think it'll be really interesting because it's a new race for all the drivers. Yes. Right, and then they have to sort of learn it without actually racing it until maybe they. It'll rain. This, this yeah. has been my favorite part. The last five or six years now, or maybe more even, they've had a new race every single year. Oh, it's that's really been cool. Almost, yeah. almost every single year for a long time. And there's more even planned next year. Is you know more, oh, wow. and more and more and more. It'd be interesting to see the stats of who finished where in the new races uh, throughout the years. Because, All the new tracks as they were. Yeah, as, as they were. So, like, who who finished in that year top place or top three and then in the, their place in, all the new in, circuits. In, the, in the new circuits? They yeah, say that, we should look be, something we could look at. Ooh, ooh mm-hmm. interesting. Mm-hmm. interesting. Mm-hmm. We'll keep, we'll, 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 we'll try to remember to do that. But I guess <laughs> yeah. there's going to be a lot of Brits, Germans, French people disappointed about the end of the Le Mans being covered up. That's most of the market, I think, for the Le Mans race, anyways. Yeah, I guess so. It's a lot of the market for the European Grand Prix too. Is the Brits, Germans, and the French, <laughs> <laughs> and some of the people are going to be the most disappointed. That's Which, yeah. That, that, that still kind of irks me a little bit. The fact that they were so adamant to call it the European Grand Prix, they could have. Do, why not just make it the Azeri Grand Prix? Be proud, you know. Mm-hmm. Like yell it from the rooftops. Yes. But you know we're, we're we're Europe. Like we, you can say that once people are there and just show them around and be like, look, isn't this just kind just like? <laughs> but but you know why why wouldn't you call it the Azeri Grand Prix? Mm. Right? Well, uh, a little segue, anyways, for the disappointment of the Europeans, mm-hmm. Silverstone. So uh, <laughs> so tight on cash, right? They're they're very tight on cash. Silverstone is in Forbes this week yesterday. Oh well, right. is it a, is it an article written by Christian Silt? It is so written this by is, Christian Silt. So this Silt. is Bernie's words. Okay. Current, yeah. <laughs> I write about the business of auto racing and theme parks. He's a contributor to Forbes. So the uh, I, I'm glad that you know that because I did not know that. Yeah. Christian Silt. I actually can't see his face on my computer because of all this blocking shit, but. <laughs> Ecclestone is making the point in this article that you're not selling this track. So the way that it works is Silverstone is owned and controlled by the BRDC. A group, yeah, a group called the BRDC. You yeah. want to explain what that is? They're the British Racing Drivers Association. Oh, right. okay. Uh, or, or, or British Racing Drivers. Whatever, whatever the C stands for. It, right. It's There's 850 <laughs> members of the BRDC. If you if you look at whenever, um, um, I think that they have like certain rules even for, for to, to be part of it. So for example, um, obviously Damon Hill is part of it. Uh, Jackie Stewart is There's part of it. 850 dudes. Uh, Probably um, mostly men. What's his name? Brundle is part of it. And when Brundle does like certain like TV shit with his own overalls, you can always tell because they're just plain white and they have oh, one little that. logo. That logo is the BRDC, the BRDC logo. logo. So uh, Sir, Sir Sterling Moss, also BRDC. Mario Andretti. It's not not only British. Wait, Mario Andretti? Andretti is... He is? He's, he's Roger Penske. He's also an American. Really? They okay. are members. I didn't know that. But anyway, so they control the track. They've been trying to sell lease control of it for a couple of years now. Mm-hmm. But it's kind of interesting that they're separately from the owning of the track, the track hosts the British Grand Prix. Oh. Silverstone hosts the British right. Grand Prix, okay. and they have since the beginning. It was an old British military Air, Air Force base. Uh, written into the contract for the British Grand Prix is a clause that says... Actually, can- Canadian, uh, a couple Canadian regiments uh, flew out of there, too. Oh, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I want to find the anyway. There's there's a clause that says this track 
cannot change hands without permission of Bernie Ecclestone. The control of it. You mean the puppet strings? <laughs> <laughs> the puppet strings, right? Yeah. So I don't know. There, um, there, there was a deal that's been floating around since like a month or two ago that they're trying to make happen for Jaguar to take control of the track oh, shit. and use it as uh, the Jaguar head office and testing facility for Jaguar's cars hmm. and stuff like that. But I guess Bernie's blocking it and using this article to assert himself and say, like, the, the title of the article is Ecclestone holds the keys to British Grand Prix sale. But listen, the, the, the point is that Bernie actually might just want to run Silverstone to the ground. Right. Bernie actually like has an interest. Okay. This is what I believe. The, the, as well. the, this, this is a thing, though. For a long time, there's been the idea that there should be an F1 race in London. Mm-hmm. Okay, wait, wait. Let, let's finish with Silverstone. Okay. Let, let's okay, okay, let's okay. destroy Silverstone. Okay, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> Bef- before, before. Silverstone, right now, this year, they need, or sorry, last year, they needed $26 million was their hosting fee. Okay. I'm not sure actually if it was dollars or pounds, mm-hmm. but at 26 million currency. <laughs> the the number it doesn't exactly pieces matter. of eight it doesn't exactly matter <laughs> but what happened i think five or maybe three years ago there's a huge piece of land attached to the racetrack okay that was controlled by forever i guess whatever it was there before that's uh i don't know how many hundreds of acres mm-hmm. they had uh control of that and there was there's sort of a business park there okay that was generating a lot of income for the group that owns Silverstone for the mm-hmm. for the BRDC. Mm-hmm. They gave up control of that a couple of years ago because they needed a lump sum of money to do a bunch of upgrades to the track. To the track that Bernie needed them to do, like the facilities upgrade. They moved. They basically rearranged the the race and they moved, built a new pit facility and they used the old one for. Just a, other, a separate others. starting grid for other races. Oh, okay. There's a bunch of configurations for the track. They, they built like that, like that. Indian thing instead of like it being like a like a thing that it now it goes down right like that that was well, all part of it yeah so this gave up control of that to get a lump of money to do these things that Bernie needed them to do the thing with the hosting fee is that uh, Silverstone has the contract for the British Grand Prix until 2026 but there's a stipulation that every year the hosting fee goes up five percent so the British race is already the most expensive tickets of any race in the world. Holy Even more expensive shit. than going to Monaco. Yeah. Think about that. 220 what? pounds last year. But they, they made a record attendance, but they're just sort of their uh, accountants have proven like you can't really put the price much higher and expect anyone to come. Yeah. So, <laughs> so Fuck. basically they're in a position that, and it's also one of the only races that doesn't have any government funding behind it no mm, government yeah. backing the government of almost every country that are f1 races in pays for some of it or at least puts up the money to get everything moving right so the there's there's big uh like government of canada banners at the at the at the grand prix race at the, at the at oh the was Australia. that yeah, yeah. right we, we talked about at least this in, at least in like one or two corners yeah. yeah a few months ago we talked about this the in return for signing the Canadian Grand Prix contract for 10 more years yeah. for Montreal to host it, there was uh, f- the government promised $40 million upgrades to the track. We, we talked about this before, like right, a, a yeah, hospital yeah. F- facilities upgrade. We're going to rebuild the pit facility. Like the, like the, the teams wanted bigger garages, more up-to-date garages. Yeah. Right. The Piranha Club facilities. Yeah. I guess <laughs> you need some yeah. new TVs and some leather couches yeah. in there. Um, but... As Jay was saying, ba- basically, the terms are such that they're fucked. Right. Bernie's not going to let them sell it no. to, so that they could get money to host, continue hosting the race. And as you said, there, we, there was talk of a London GP about two or three years ago. Yeah. I lo- I, I, a big part of like not the, the, that you couldn't race in London before was because these cars were too too loud too right. m- much too loud uh, it wouldn't approve like like the, the the city councils or whatever it would be a hard sell mm-hmm. um now now they're actually not that loud and formula e already does uh, a race in london um, formula e does two races two, in yeah london. two, two races back to back right yeah yeah um so it the interest has been growing more and more there definitely is 
there is a way to do an F1 race in London. Mm-hmm. Plans have been around for a while. Can you go just... over the bridge, please? <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, they, they would do it in a way that, it, that, that that's the point. Like, to make it so... They're, they're going to try to, like, make it so that it does bring up at least some of the monuments of the city. Right. Or at least some of the most important, like, <clears throat> like maybe, like, even... They were even saying of... Um, like doing like a like a sort of a hairpin around uh, Buckingham Palace. Oh, cool! That, so, I think that was <clears throat> proposed in when this came up about two in 2012. Uh, I think that was part of that. Yeah. But, and now they're more pushing on Hyde Park, which I, I think which, the Formula E is near there, isn't it? Something like uh, Battersea Park. Bat- oh, okay. So yeah, right, but right, but, right, but right, anyway, right. yeah, Hyde Park is a big park, and yeah, you it's can like you can do central, lots for Americans. It's like the Central Park of London. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or the High Park of Toronto. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hyde, Hyde Park, High Park, but. Yeah. It's it's their big park, yeah, and it's really it, exciting. You, you actually, interestingly, uh, like if they actually do end up doing it uh, near Hyde Park, uh, Bernie's uh, Bernie's offices are like basically oh, yeah, two blocks away. That is right. from he, Prince's his, Gate. His office overlooks and the part he lives above it overlooks the park. Right? It, it yeah, part part of it does like the the top of it would. Yeah, no, it's, it's not. It's not all. Not in the entire building because there's like yeah, sorry, picture, there's like before. a street in between mm. with like some some construction <laughs> there. But if you go high up enough in Bernie's, Bernie's office, you can see down on high <laughs> five. <laughs> 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 um, it, it, but it would be. I think it would be brilliant to have, and I th- I think I would like to have a race in London. And but the point is that yeah. two British races are unsustainable. There's mm. just. Like <clears throat> the British, fr- like it, a race in London would kill attendance uh, for uh, for the British Grand Prix um, in in Silverstone. It, yeah. it just would, yeah. N- not because it would be, or not just because it would be a, a new race, and because they probably like find a way to like make it really cool, but also because the people that would like you know, the British people that would have gone to Silverstone that are from London or or the surroundings, they're gonna prefer to go. Uh, to London, they stay at home, save some money that way. Mm-hmm. The camping was expensive and not very good. Yeah. At Silverstone, anyway, um, it's far. The, it, here's a related quote: the uh, the guy behind this. Mm-hmm. This is actually going to be. They're changing the Road Traffic Act of England before Parliament within the next few months to make this happen. So there's a conservative MP named Sir Greg Knight, and he is the chairman of English Parliament's Historic Vehicles Group. And uh, his his exact quote is, "This will open the sport up to the public who don't have 220 pounds to get into an F1 race." Wow. Yeah. And the 220 pounds is like for GA tickets, like what we took, what we wow. got in Montreal, where you you yeah, got to stand yeah, on, for the shitty seats. You yeah. get to bring a lawn chair and sit in the grass. The the grandstands are in, so, in the hundreds. Of yeah. Time. So, but yeah, but that was like a very in, particular yeah, shot yeah, at yeah. that whole Silverstone. Um, More or less, yeah. I'm sure. Obviously, yeah. he's uh, being lobbied from behind by oh, Bernie, yeah. right? Bernie's Bur- Bernie's getting articles in Forbes to assert his. So uh, 220 uh, British pounds is 444 Canadian dollars. Where do we get it? We we got our tickets on for like sale, 70 but we're something 76 bucks. bucks. Yeah, 76 Whoa. 76 know, dollars right? paid yeah, for. Mu- yeah, for, for for not even grandstands. So uh, yeah, it's we managed, we got our tickets on a half price deal. They're normally that is 150. That's unreasonable. But yeah, it's two and a half times anyways. Yeah. Plus, mo- the Montreal race is in Montreal. It's right yeah. downtown. Yeah, you can get off a subway and you're at the front door. Whereas which we didn't take. <laughs> the, <laughs> the British race is very, very far from London. Walked every time. Yeah, it's a, yeah. It's a long bus ride. An hour and forty five minutes or so yeah, away. Well, almost two hours away. And it's in the middle of nowhere. A lot of people hate yeah. it because you can't like it's it's very it's an inconvenience, yeah. right? To go to go all the way out there. And honestly, I mean, as much as I like Silverstone, and as much as I. Um, uh, as I think it has produced like good races, and it's not a bad track. Um, I, if I had to give up Silverstone to have a race in London, I'd say yeah. Like that's that. Not only does that make sense, but it could be better altogether. A Silverstone track is for, like uh, it's one of my favorites. Yeah, but would you really like? I think. No, yeah, I'd, I'd give it up. For, I'd give it up for a London yeah. Grand Prix downtown, for yeah. sure, <laughs> absolutely. But, but as far as it's, like, it's in the same say, way. Say if okay, I'm listen, playing the Formula One video it's in the game, same way, I'll pick that. It's in the same way that I, I would prefer, like, you know, as much as I as I as I'm nostalgic about Monza, and I like, I do say like, oh, you know, the, Mon- the you know the Monza can go away. Yeah, I'm, but, I'm less enthusiastic. Yeah, for Monza. But if they did a race what? around uh, Milan. Or yeah, or or even Rome. I'd be like, yeah, okay, yeah, Monza's gotta go. <laughs> this yeah, is, imagine yeah. that's it. <laughs> imagine a huge curve around the Colosseum or yeah, something. Yeah, like yeah, that? yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. 
Yeah, I would I would say so. And and come on, it's it's it looks cool. And 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 a lot of uh, F1 fans do say like you know street car or street races are you know are they the worst because you know they, they don't show the cars like full ability. Come on, they they are cool still. Of course they are. Yeah, They're, I like them more personally. <laughs> yeah. I, most of them I like more. Um, but yeah, the, this is great. It looks like it's gonna happen. Like they're determined. They, maybe, they maybe had in success. I think no, it's not gonna take that long, man. They're pushing this through. They're well, Bernie Ecclestone is destroying the Silverstone British Grand Prix. Uh, absolutely. Why would that? That's he's, what that article's about. He's, he's not gonna allow them to sell it. They've been trying yeah. for five years, mm-hmm. and he's been pushing. He's got this guy, member of parliament on his side. They've got Formula E the past two years, massive success. Yeah. No problems with shutting down the roads. Nope. Because apparently right now, the way that the Road Traffic Act is, a lot of British laws are really old. Mm -hmm. So it takes months or up to a year, as far as as I read into this, for to get the licensing and everything from local council and everything. Part of it is a big thing to do with the noise and Mm -hmm. shutting down the streets. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because there's a lot of one-way streets and horse roads and stuff in in, in London. There used to be horse roads. (laughs) So it's a big, big problem. But they, I guess they've proven now they can do it. They're trying really hard. Bernie wants it. Bernie, Outside his Bernie office. definitely wants it. Yeah. yeah. And he's got parliament legislation going before parliament. It says within this, months. This year, within months. Yeah, they're expecting it to pass before the end of this year. Wow. To basically allow the local councils of London to basically shut down roads and not have to go through parliament to get a license. Even uh, Sterling Moss, who was in F1 back in like from back yeah, in the day, I saw him talking about it. Yeah, they almost did it one time. Yeah, yeah, apparently it was it was almost done, but Scotland Yard shut it down. The local police before the internet and stuff, they had this race set up to go. And yeah, the, but the police shut it down before it happened. And you know, on safety grounds, what? But this was also before the FIA uh, was like you know big into safety. Amco, I think before right. Amco was invented, yeah, people were just sitting on the sidewalk. Uh, it's <laughs> type thing. And and even even Sterling Moss says that yeah, it would be fantastic. It would be. It would be great to have a freaking yes. London race. Yeah. Make it happen. Yeah, I want to see it. More now, city ones. Now, city now Bernie is not like that. You know, it's it's kind of suffocating the the British Grand Prix of Silverstone thing. Right. And maybe he has a future in mind for for London race. And then on the other hand, now he, he he's turning around and saying that. There shouldn't be. A, there's no worries. There's no concerns with the with the U.S. Grand Prix, even though we know that they're not sitting on solid footing right now. Mm. Yeah. So I don't know. They made an announcement yesterday that uh, more or less reiterated what Bernie said, and this was from I forget the exact title, but he's the head of the track, the chairman, or whatever. Yeah. He said, "Yeah, it's. I can't say a hundred percent, but it looks like an, this is our fifth year. Everyone's looking forward to it. It's." You know, it's, it's a, they have about a seven million shortfall in government money because of the attendance was down this year because right. they got hit with that hurricane. Ah, uh, so, right. So that that's what's up in the air. But I think they should be able to find seven million. It's kind of a big deal. But again, there's 21 races on the calendar. The Concord Agreement says 20. And there's there's nobody's mentioned it in any of these news articles. But one of these races still might not happen. Yeah, it's it still might not. Maybe Spa, maybe Monza, maybe uh, United States. Oh, Bernie sure. probably knows which one it is. Or at least which one he wants it to be. Yeah. Or maybe he doesn't want any to be any of them. I don't but <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? If if the teams take that to to arbitration, like they're gonna they're gonna win because it's already been written down. Twenty races, right. that's it. Right. Yeah. They cannot be forced to race the twenty races. Or you know, more than twenty races. Right. And anyway, a decision has been promised for the end of February. Do you think though that that it the maybe Bernie's angle this year is going to be, you know what, you don't have to race the twenty races, but the there's going to be like people out there that don't have enough points, that maybe they'll they'll make that their twentieth race. The Joker race. Yeah, like a Joker. So let's say if you're if you're in the so if you're in Mekonda, you go skip spa maybe your monster the yeah. power track and just go to the yeah go to the other one get some points there save your penalties the wear and tear and trying to push the engine to 100 percent for two hours right? why not right <laughs> like I that could know. be some that could be a team like one team's angle yeah this layered on top yeah. of the cliff yeah right <laughs> for sure uh do we have like in, you had some something else about an extra other track 
No, that's it. Oh, that's it. Okay. <laughs> but that's all. It's it, but again, okay. Yeah, Baku gonna be great. Silverstone. It's gonna be great still, but London would be better. Yeah, it's not happening this year, but could next year. Yeah, Ch- take a look. It's on the Formula E race, the London race. It looks pretty awesome. Yeah, cool. Check it out. So, so today's today's the meeting. The half the rally. The Pirelli meeting in Italy. In Italy. Very interesting. Right. The secret side meeting for 2017. The but we don't know anything about that. Really, nothing has come out yet because you know right, yeah, on account of it being a secret happening meeting. now, sort of <laughs> just happening today. It's it probably but, hasn't even ended. These meetings apparently go like to late, man. Go like all night. Yes. Yeah, worth hundreds of millions of dollars. Yeah, yeah. Um, order some nice pizza, you know. <laughs> <laughs> what like some what Italian pizza? What is you know go 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 for some nice uh, uh, Milani Milanese aperitivo? Should be nice. <laughs> Should be nice for them. No, but I think I will. I mean, obviously, it's in Milan because Pirelli wanted them to go to Italy. Right. But yeah. there's a per- special Pirelli called meeting. But Bernie uh, called everybody yeah. else so they could have an extra meeting before the real strategy group meeting next month, February 23rd. Because March March 1st is the signed deadline for 2017 rules to be that's finalized. Right, yeah, that's why they need to be like right. Unless fast. Well finalized without unanimous consent beyond march 1st and like, especially if they're goes to show you, bringing man. around a revolution as we've been promised for yeah, <laughs> for the that, past year and a half that goes to show you man holy shit so to prepare for the last year the, the team what like within the first quarter of the year they already start thinking of next year yeah that's what that's insane yeah yeah well i think uh, bi- a bigger part i think possibly is Pirelli needs a huge lead time especially That's if they're going to yes. change the entire construction of, which is still possible two two days ago ahead of this meeting uh, bernie came out and said that he believes in quotes one million percent that formula one <laughs> should go back to and be about maximum attack racing which okay. is not what he said in 2010 when he signed Pirelli to bring in these cliff tires right but he said two days ago, Formula One needs to be maximum attack, one million percent. So is, maybe that's the way we're going now for 2017. But how, like, how, how is that even going to come to play? I mean, th- see, the thing is that completely th- new tires. But this Basically, <laughs> call back, call Michelin back. Hey, remember uh, we said you guys <laughs> uh, we didn't want you to build tires for us. <laughs> Change their minds. No, but okay, listen. Th- th- this is obviously. Um, in the back of that one meeting that happened before Christmas, um, where the, the the teams were like, "Oh, you know, we're gonna have to come up with these crazy new aero, and it's not gonna be ground effect. This is gonna be like they're gonna be, you know, b- bigger wings and more flexibility on the wings. It's gonna, just gonna be crazier with the aero, the aero that we know right now. Mm-hmm. This aero is just they're just gonna, you know, amp up the craziness on it and." Then Pirelli went and said, "No, no, you can't because if you if you go ahead and do that, we're just gonna have to make tires that are stronger, and the, and because they're gonna be stronger tires, um, what they, it's, what gonna, they first it's said, gonna slow everything down, so it's gonna negate the effect that the that the, that the higher grip or the the higher downforce." What they what they first said is that the current tires could take it, but they'd have to be run six, seven, eight psi more, which the ty- the teams don't want. Yes, they said the tires could take it. The construction. And that three seconds is more realistic. The original five second max grip idea is gone. Oh because, yeah, and because I, of that, it, it, because it, it, does, it does it doesn't make sense. And five seconds fast, having the cars five seconds faster doesn't necessarily. It's not going to guarantee you anything. It's not going to guarantee you that, that the that that the racing is going to be closer. That, uh, yeah. that the the cars are going to be more difficult. In fact, to drive. every driver has been screaming against it since the idea was floated. Yeah, because every driver is against it because they know the that wake. that's not the answer. Yeah, the yeah. aerodynamic wake, the the disturbance zone, the dirty air. You can't drive close behind. So now, now, hopefully, cooler heads prevail or will prevail, and and they they do go back to more of a revolution as opposed to an evolution of the of the current rules. Right. Well, there's a secret revolution this year happening with Pirelli. Let, let me say this first: in yeah. in 2011, okay. for those that are newer to F1. Mm-hmm. 
Pirelli became the sole tire supplier to Formula One with a mandate from Bernie that the tires should wear out quicker. They should have uh, a drop-off point to force pit stops and force drivers to like play, save their tires and cause closer racing and be more careful about the, f- the fighting. <laughs> so this is co- they used something called the thermal degradation. Mm-hmm. That if Th- you drove, there used to be two shots, right? <laughs> 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 two, two, two shots of beer. Yeah. <laughs> But the idea behind those tires, the construction of them, was if you drove them too hard and they reached a, cer- a certain temperature, the rubber went above a certain temperature, it would change the compound, would change its consistency irreversibly, and the tire that was the cliff. But The problem with these that tires. The cliff was also. I think it was one one shot. <laughs> What I'm referring to is that um, the, b- back yeah. in the day when we were watching the races together, uh, we'd 2011-12 be like, was the the drinking game of tires. Yeah, because, <laughs> because every single race, man, they would just talk like and, you know in the pre-show they would they would talk about tires during the race. The tires what was was the, all the talk like honestly, man. Every two minutes you couldn't. Like you couldn't go more than five minutes without hearing, you know, tires, Don't thermal forget, degradation. This degradation. was before the new engines. Yeah, Pirelli. this is back when we still had the V8s. Yeah, they, f- they first brought wow. this Pirelli. Yeah, Pirelli. Th- yeah, each one of those like would be like one drink. Some some of the terms like thermal degradation that would be like two drinks, and that was our, that was our drinking game. Cliff was 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 definitely one of one of them in there, and It's, I guess the cliff is coming back in a totally different way though. So 2011, 12, and. 2011 and 12 they use this thermal degradation and but especially in 2012 and into 2013 well, there's a lot of accidents the delaminations mm-hmm. that was Remember three when, drinks like, the tires just like just unraveled, <laughs> unraveled. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the, the introduct the intro clip from sky from two years ago was that clip of the tire the tire carcass almost killing it was a, a lot the, yeah they, no there and uh, actually this year there was one scene i think it was rosberg tire um like just this just the circular part that goes around like the belt around it kind of like came loose from everything else and it like right. continued on its way it was hilarious but so, <laughs> Vet- vetel at spa he was yeah. even this year was close to sort of uh death he was 100 meters from going into the wall so but in into 2011 and 12 the tires were coming apart a lot and there were a bunch of punctures because of the construction so in the halfway through 2013 they switched the type of tires they were using okay. went to a stronger tire and then after 2014 they changed the construction of the back tires to make them stronger because these new motors have so much torque with the, the turbocharger right. and the electric power mm-hmm. so they've, they've sort of evolved but they moved away from that thermal degradation because they couldn't make them safe and en- safe enough right but This new concept is called the undertread layer. The undertread layer. Undertread layer. Right. So you remember we talked about the Abu Dhabi test at the end of the the final race of the year. That we thought that it was going to be the uh, for the XWED. Right. Well, yeah. Well, the, that's the teams kind of thought that too. Oh, There right. was media. The media was banned from from the test. <laughs> this this happened on the I think the Tuesday and Wednesday after the final race. Okay. Yes. 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 In, yeah, in yeah, December yeah. in Abu Dhabi. The teams weren't told until the day after the test that they were testing some new prototypes for 2015 that have a, this cliff built in. But the the undertread layer is at 70% wear, 70% of the layer of the rubber. Right. Instead of the rubber changing consistency, it's just a different layer of a different type of rubber, a harder mm-hmm. rubber. So the tire is strong and it turns to shit at 70% after you burn off 70% of the rubber. <laughs> right yeah <laughs> yeah so yeah uh, that's that, that's where we're at so for this year though something that hasn't been talked about yet really by i would i guess it's the broadcaster's responsibility mm-hmm. there's a new tie-up between fom and pirelli okay. to put a, a ton of tired data on the screen for us because teams now are going to have their full range of sets three different types to choose from the 10 tires yeah right? and uh so there's going to be a new graphic system done by Pirelli that's sh- going to show you what each driver's got in the garage, what they've used, oh, where cool. they're at on their wear levels, <clears throat> possibly maybe their temperature. That was that was actually one of the suggestions that actually, if, if I'm not mistaken, that actually came from those surveys that like they they that they yeah. had earlier. Uh, And last this year. this year they're bringing yeah. it, they're bringing that in to, they're so they're hoping that this new cliff 
we'll bring some of the kind of action we had in 2011 12 because it, it was really crazy nobody knew what was going on like yeah cars were just pulling in at see, like all different seven, kinds of strategies seven different race winners in the first seven races that yeah. hadn't been seen whoa there's yeah. more practice on the tires now but it's a whole there's a new compound yeah that seems the, like it changes things fundamentally. Something else interesting. We talked uh, a couple, whatever it was, maybe a month ago already. The teams had to choose. They were given the selections by Pirelli. They had to choose what tires they're bringing to the first three races. Right. And then to Russia as well afterwards. Now, right? But they weren't told about this cliff until after everybody's choices were in. If you didn't know that. So, really? so the first three races yes. at least are going to be completely in the air because the teams didn't know that the cliff nice. was built into these tires. They assumed that they had a, a softer option, which isn't actually available at the first three races. Yeah. And they assumed that they were coming on the same tires as they had. That's an underhanded sneak attack. <laughs> but <by> good. <laughs> yeah, yes. sort of. But like lying (laughs) (laughs) it's gonna be fun to watch yeah Yeah, no it's gonna be fun to watch but if i were um if i were a competitor i'd be very upset it's definitely like throwing it's a waste like it's a waste of time throwing a bunch of calculations out the window yeah it's like like, well fuck that (laughs) oh jesus like that (laughs) drop it mike (laughs) (laughs) no that's that's weird but I guess it's exciting. It's gonna be exciting. I it's think. It's going think, to be. Yeah, I think it, it's, it's it's kind of like it, I can see how. Yes, like, if, you, if, you're, if, if you're cynic, I'm upset. if you're no, cynic I'm about upset. it, you can you can say that it's it's almost like artificially added now, like you know, like a strategy ch- shuffle. Right. Which, like sprinklers. Which it kind of is, <laughs> but it's not. Yeah, but it's not quite like sprinkles. It's, this is actually gonna be very very exciting to watch right like it's 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 not gonna feel too artificial i know that it's not because if it if yeah if it's just bringing things back to how it was in 2012 yeah yeah, the the only the reason they stopped (laughs) the reason they stopped doing that was because they proved their their entire construction was dangerous yeah and drivers almost died well here's a well we we don't have to bring it up but picture of the, the lamination there you can find a whole bunch. There, there were a lot actually of delaminations yeah. through, oh, yeah. throughout the practice qualies, and uh, and the races. But uh, hopefully those won't be back. Even though there was one this year too, right? Right. They changed those back tires. Yeah. Know, but then gonna, the pressure, or whatever. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm sure. Whatever. Probably is gonna be able to handle it. Even those crashes were uh, like meaning could have gone a lot worse than they actually did go. Uh, I think. I think we're still. We're still in the safe territory with this, and it would be nice to see back to, to bring back the cliff. Let's bring it back. <laughs> bring yeah. it back. Yeah. But it might only be for this one year because by March first today, mm-hmm. Bernie's going to be pushing this max Martin, attack. March first is not today. No, but the <laughs> the, me- the meeting t- today, Bernie yeah. is going to be pushing. Yeah. The, for March first. The, me- yeah. the meeting, the max attack, though. Yes. Right. Okay. So for yeah, for today he'll be pushing the opposite. That of, it, of what he's promoting he's, this year because he Complete already he, he already lost one battle with the engines thing and he, oh, he, he hasn't given up on that though. No, he, he hasn't given up on that for sure <laughs> listen i think maximum attack is definitely what the fans want but they've been like i'm sure that like them in defining what maximum attack is that's that's where they might that sounds it like a, a superhero move from a japanese anime <laughs> If you, if, you, if you go back on YouTube though, you don't have to watch the whole race, but and we don't have to do it on the show either. But just just the listeners, go look at like two thousand six, seven, eight, somewhere around there, and just watch, just Google uh, Formula One battle or something, yeah, and watch how different they were then. Yes, it's, it's like a different style of racing. They were pushing like like as as hard as they could, whereas now it's it's more of you see them fighting the grip and everything, right. I think the last thing they need is to go back to get rid of the computers in the car. Those computers. Too much data. The car is controlled. We're taking our jobs. Yeah, yeah, they, the car is re- half remote controlled by 50 engineers in a control center like NASA has. Right. It's crazy. Yeah. I don't like it. <laughs> no, it, 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 like it, it. It is one of those things that's not very popular. Full show. Anyways, I guess we'll hopefully we'll have some answers, some real answers that aren't going to change again next week. Yeah, hopefully, yeah, hopefully by this time next week, all everything that came out of uh, these meetings in, uh, in in Milan, we'll be able to know the outcome, and we mm-hmm. will keep you guys posted with what we think about it. 
Let's talk about all the bullshit stories of the week now. We're back. Baku. We're back. We're Baku. We're Baku. Baku to the future. <laughs> <laughs> let's look at this. Let's look at this video here. Somebody made this about uh in the past. I don't know. I found it in the past week anyway. Yeah, let's watch this. So anyone watching, we're um we're looking at a video made I think partly by maybe Street View or somebody put a camera on their car going around the Formula One track in Baku. Or what is going to be? Which will be the street circuit. Yeah. Ooh, neat. Well, it's, it's it's a YouTube but video. We're, we're gonna put a link in the comments or maybe want to put the sound out. I don't know. There, there's the outline on video. Yeah. The sound out. Yeah. There's just some fake fake noises. It's not an actual F1 car. Oh right, because it's gonna be. Okay, so right. gonna oh, be this is clockwise. insane. So yeah. It's a, oh man, this left turn. It's the first corner. The the uh, coming off the really wide front straight. Going back, 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 back. Up to the north part of the circuit here. Now this is going to be one of the one of the highest speed zones, right? Uh, I think the front will be. Yeah. The, this the, this circuit is going to have like a nice long straight, and they're going to be able to actually reach top speed. Yeah. This this part too. This is going to curve around here a bit. This is heading towards. This is the the back straight. I guess heading towards the old city. So there's a chicane. Another short straight. Yeah, see, well, I just turned the sound off. So just, somebody just kind of put a dash cam on their regular car and then uh, filmed this. The backwards some... stuff kind of just drives me crazy. Yeah. <laughs> like what? Yeah, I guess some of these are one-way oh, streets yeah. that are going to be raced backwards, so the video is sort of reversed from uh, the back of the car. So here's the old types. city. There's the narrow, the narrow section going uphill. Chicane. Oh. That's the cir cir corners eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. One of those silly London cabs that they brought. <laughs> yeah, there's one of the London cabs. So now we're at the, the third sector of the circuit. That the sort of curvy sector. You're gonna sort of swoop around here and go back downhill, back towards the water. And okay, there's and a that, lot of sun in the video. That's here. gonna be that that crazy straight where they're gonna be able to like just really gun. This it. is down, down, downhill cobblestone back onto cobblestone yeah the yes. uphill oh, corkscrew we, we don't have any more uh, races on cobblestone anymore it, like no. monaco kind of used to be like this but monaco has since been resurfaced obviously so this that, is going to be another challenge for cobblestone teams. i think might be in the probably three four hundred years old too as as old as the walled city is well for i think i think even older than that man so here the video kind of seems to be stuck in traffic but there, there's a little swoop here before it left and then down to the main boulevard which is something like 14 meters wide or something but you can like gonna be like eight eight cars wide or something coming down the main straight here but you can see what they were saying though that there's not going to be a lot of oh, room for uh grandstands no there's not but it's gonna look cool yeah, yeah. it's, it's gonna be like yeah it's gonna look for cool for tv for sure and, and if you, you and if you oh, live yeah. around here then you know what i mean like then you yeah you're set same type of thing as monaco anyone that has a yeah. balcony and that lives downtown here wow. and it, church, church, all church. these condos here are going to be filled up with the balcony so th that was the end of the, the front straight there wow very that's cool very cool to see really right? cool right right the most corners of any track the second I'm longest really track one of the fastest yeah, it's gonna tracks be, it's gonna be second long. or third fastest track second longest track well the most corners no, i believe 22 no, not corners. necessarily fastest in terms of average speed but like, no one of the quickest sectors yeah. mexico i guess is the new fastest because they don't have any air <laughs> 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 yeah but yeah you it's pretty cool, right? Yeah. Now, how does very cool how does a, ca uh, a Formula One car handle cobblestone? Well, they're gonna have to do some some crazy like stiff suspension, to right? Be sure. Yeah. Yeah, because so. it's gonna be all bumpy. You're gonna lose. Pull, some pull up the I tweet imagine. too. Like, we might as well look at that quickly. Ted Kravitz, I think, is in Azerbaijan right now because he tweeted something the other day too from his hotel room. But uh, expand that that main picture there. He's got a photograph basically standing on the road on the narrow part we just looked at in the video. That's so be. you can see the width. There's sort of an SUV sitting near that intersection. It's something six or seven meters wide. Hey, they're, they're the cars are going to be two meters wide Dude, on cobblestone uphill. They're in really a really pushing like the. Oh, so they're going uphill here. Yeah, they're going to go up wow. uphill here to the back. The top part of the circuit is 
Uh, sort of, I think, just around that corner. I think. I and think then they head back down. See, if if, the cr- if crash started, it would, it would have still been in no, F1. He would have taken this ta- this third. Yeah, that, that's no, going to be further good. narrowed, right? That's going to be <laughs> piled up with Armco's and those rubber yeah. thing, those rubber gray things for sure. Yeah, but I don't know. Pastor would just have a way of just finding yeah. it and just launching himself. Oh, yeah. They're going to have to protect that. that this. That wall is something the UNESCO World Heritage protected, blah, blah. Nobody can even look at it. <laughs> I can't look. No, no, please, sir. Don't look at it. Yeah, it's just historically protected. So. I, I would imagine the sound and vibration of Formula One cars. Going up this and, through that tunnel? Oh, my like, God. It's going like, to be awesome. Like, who lives here? I want to make friends with them. They're going to get shattered. Either somebody <laughs> lives there or it's somebody's office, right? Like, yeah. Somebody's somebody's occupies that window. That's oh, my amazing. God. Yeah, that's so cool. Wow, phenomenal. We'll look, I've yeah, never look been up, more excited. Yeah, looking forward to this race for sure, even if it's actually like... Sorry, now, can you guys tell so, me a bit about like the history? Uh, because it's a new race, right? Yes. First time, yeah. First time, but and it's never been raced before? Never. Never, never even no. in the country. There's been no. a, it a seems so race. crazy to me that they would pick this style in a city... Um, as opposed to like the big sort of American circuits, the newer ones. Like they're American... All like, doesn't have money yeah. and they're not interested that's the, Azerbaijan that's the, yeah. is interested in changing the perception of their entire country right right they, they've got a condo boom going they're promoting they just held the we were talking earlier about the uh Eurovision awards right they right. bought a thousand of these London black cabs to pop to populate yeah. their city they were replace their entire taxi system to, well, they, they, to be they, more they really modern want, they really want to show the world that like hey like we're not like some like backwards like you know uh, yeah. middle eastern country like yeah. we actually like have more in common with the the city is built in a beautiful bay they have an amazing beach there on the front Wow. You see, there's a lot of condos and offices going up, so they're having some kind of this, boom there. But this, the story of these places in the, in the world, man. Historical city as well. Yeah, but, okay, so, you know, they used to be very much like what we consider, like, you know, what, they, they, they're surrounded by countries like, you know, Syria, yeah, mm-hmm. um, Iran, et cetera, et cetera, right? Mm-hmm. They, are, uh, they are around that same neighborhood, uh, place like uh, Azerbaijan, but also uh, the country of Georgia. Mm. But they do have a distinct sort of Europeanish feeling because these were places that were uh, occupied by uh, the Crusaders. Mm. So that, that's, that's where the, the European... Um, connection kind of comes from when the Crusaders came. Like these were like big bases or whatever. Like the, right, like, right. So people from Europe do, do have a link. To I was going to say the architecture reminds yeah. me of yeah. uh, a bit of Europe. And I think that, and that's what that's what they're kind of trying to like bring back. Like hey, like you know we we are sort of hey, Europe we're cool. Too. We're, we're, we're Europe we're too, cool. sort of in a way. <laughs> come on, come on, guys. Uh, but <laughs> so, neighboring countries, it's attached to Russia, Georgia, Armenia, and Iran, and Iran to the south. Yeah, really yeah. close to Turkey. No, actually, with Turkey. Oh, well, uh, Turkey's yeah, in between. They sort of have this... Uh, there's a bit of a bit missing here. Armenia has a little strip, but I guess Azerbaijan is split in half. It's got an exclave. Anyway, yeah, it's... <laughs> yeah. it's it, just just try just, just the fact that we're talking about it, mm-hmm. uh, I think that, that, that yeah, that's this, what they're going for. This is the whole yeah. thing. The whole thing. That's, all, that's what they want. Yeah, just awareness about Azerbaijan. You know, they have a bit of oil money right now, so mm-hmm. that's that's why they can afford to do these things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the thing is that, it uh, to me, if you ask me, I think that a race in a city is probably uh, more sustainable in the long term mm-hmm. than a big purpose made track right like, absolutely like the, like the u.s yeah. ones the, it's hard to get them right and a lot of people don't like them because they sometimes like because of the sharp turns and 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 the way that like city streets are meant to be you know for tra- you know for transportation right not for racing mm. um a lot of the of the city circuits that that they've come up with in recent f1 memory are not great like remember valencia they it yeah. never it never um like they never encourage closed racing they never encourage it was flat. a lot of overtaking this is they need to put either in a city like this or a part of a city like this similar to monaco or any of the classic circuits elevation yeah it's mm. huge man the, yeah. having this hill this is a back uphill circuit and that back part of the circuit and then you come around and the third sector a huge part of it is downhill you go back down to the sea the front straight is on the waterfront. I, I think it's the, like someone, the main boulevard of the city. Right? I think someone was listening to us. <laughs> yeah. I really do because this is like what we asked for. Yeah, like, and they moved this to be a sunset race now too, which oh, 
But the, the the reason I really wanted to talk about Baku this week, something disappointing. Last week, the calendar, the full season calendar was published for race times. Right. right. And there was a sort of gentleman's agreement between the Baku European Grand Prix and the Le Mans 24-hour race uh. that they wouldn't interfere. That's why it was moved to a night race. Oh, uh, okay. And the race here was set to start after the checkered flag of the Le Mans race, but now they're going to overlap. This race was moved forward one hour, so earlier in the day, one hour, okay. so that to cause it to not end in full darkness. But it's going to overlap the Le Mans race for one hour, which is kind of shitty. Then they just yeah. announced that sort of underhandedly yesterday. Sort of like, oh yeah, by the way, oh yeah, by the way it's going to be a one hour thanks. earlier. <laughs> But yeah, that's the excuse or reason. I don't know. Like, they're gonna save some money on lighting or, or yeah, what? probably like, because probably. I guess the the Singapore race they talked about it costs something like two million dollars to light it or something or millions of dollars. It's it's they have to use a lot of lights, but to, not ending in full darkness. It doesn't really make sense. Or well, is that just like to be cool? to be distinct? I guess. Because you no, know, well, like I think, I think, I think, I think Abu Dhabi ends in starts in daylight, ends in I full think, darkness. I think that Singapore but yeah, but, is but they all, can, all in full darkness. Yeah, but they can, like, they, they have the infrastructure. If these people, if yeah. if if Baku thought that they were gonna be doing a daytime race, they didn't give uh, it. They probably didn't buy enough uh, of the lights that they needed, and maybe it's a bit too late to like plan around to ha- to like put these maybe. lights. Maybe they were planning to light parts of the track at night, anyways, to have like Monaco people are out in the circuit at night you know walking around talking about the race and have, it's like a street party for the weekend right and type of thing because it's lit yeah right yeah, they obviously have street lights in azerbaijan too because it's yeah but they're as, not they're not they, they probably don't meet like the fia requirements yeah yeah exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i, th- I, th- I it's think it's like downtown they have lights there whatever but. to be honest like as much as i as i do like the idea of the Le Mans 24 hour race there's only very few people that are going to be watching that for 24 hours, like the, the whole freaking race. Mm. I, like you, you yeah, watch, yeah. you watch the highlights. And if you are like really, like really into it, then maybe, uh, you can, you know what? You can watch the Grand Prix and then download the files later. Right. <laughs> or if you've got yeah. two televisions yeah. or a remote control, yeah, you can just switch between them. That's right. Yeah. Is that a big deal? No. A lot, I think a lot of people that watch are fans of a driver, too. So you only really have to watch a third of the stints if you're really following one guy. True. Like, yeah. No one's watching a 24 hour. You know. As much but, as, but I, I understand. Like, you know what I mean? People like, are watching the highlights and are there and yeah. camping out. And it's a festival. And, and and you know what? And one day I would like to go the, and, once, and, and, you know, and, and be there for Le Mans. Like, I think it, it would be fun to just be like here and there. But you're not there the whole 24 hours. No, that's yeah. stupid. You just. It would have. Aside from Baku, wouldn't have been a night race if they held this in the afternoon, like most races, one two p.m. Mm. Right, and then they occupy one or two hours in the middle of the Le Mans race, and then they still have the full like last two final two three hours. Yeah, exactly. of Le Mans would be free, but I don't. Know. Anyways, that's the way it's gonna happen. Mm. They're gonna overlap. There's but th- exciting nonetheless. Yeah, no, yeah. no. It's, it's, seriously, there's, there, there's no way that I mean. Even if it's like Mexico, the way that Me- the Mexican race wasn't that like wasn't you know a super good race, mm. and then not a lot happened. Even if it's the same, I'm and, and not a lot happens in this race. Just just the fact that like come on, look at this. It's gonna it's, it's gonna be exciting, and you know what? Maybe they're gonna do a pretty good a pretty good mm-hmm. job job of putting a good show. You know? Yeah, I think it'll be really interesting because it's a new race for all the drivers. Yes. Right, and then they have to sort of learn it without actually racing it until maybe they. It'll rain. This, this yeah. has been my favorite part. The last five or six years now, or maybe more even, they've had a new race every single year. Oh, it's that's been really cool. almost yeah. almost every single year for a long time. And there's more even planned next year. Is you know more oh, wow. and more and more and more. <laughs> It'd be interesting to see the stats of who finished where in the new races uh throughout the years because all the new tracks as they were yeah as, as they were so like who who finished in that year top place or top three and then in the, their place in all the new circuits in, in, in the new circuits they yeah, say that, we should be, look some we could look at Ooh, ooh mm-hmm. interesting mm-hmm. interesting we'll keep we'll, we'll 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 try to remember to do that but i guess <laughs> yeah. there's going to be a lot of brits germans french people disappointed about 
the end of the Le Mans being covered up. That's most of the market, I think, for the Le Mans race, anyways. Yeah, I guess so. It's a lot of the market for the European Grand Prix too. Is the Brits, Germans, and the French, <laughs> <laughs> and some of the people are going to be the most disappointed. That's Which yeah. That, that that still kind of irks me a little bit. The fact that they were so adamant to call it the European Grand Prix, they could have. Do, why not just make it the Azeri Grand Prix? Be proud, you know. Yeah. Like yell it from the rooftops. Yes. But you know we're, we're we're Europe. Like we, you can say that once people are there and just show them around and be like, look, isn't this just kind, just like? <laughs> but but you know why why wouldn't you call it the Azeri Grand Prix? Mm. Right? Well, uh, a little segue, anyways, for the disappointment of the Europeans. Mm -hmm. Silverstone. So uh, <laughs> so they're tight on cash. Right. They're they're very tight on cash. Silverstone is in Forbes this week. Yesterday. Oh well, right. is it a, is it an article written by Christian Silt? It is so written by is, Christian Silt. So this Silt. is Bernie's it's words. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I write about the business of auto racing and theme parks. He's a contributor to Forbes. So the uh, I, I'm glad that you know that because I did not know that. Yeah. Christian Silt. I actually can't see his face on my computer because of all this blocking shit, but. <laughs> Ecclestone is making the point in this article that you're not selling this track. So the way that it works is Silverstone is owned and controlled by the BRDC. A group, yeah, a group called the BRDC. You yeah. want to explain what that is? They're the British Racing Drivers Association. Oh, right. okay. Uh, or, or, or British Racing Drivers. Whatever, whatever the C stands for. It, right. It's There's 850 <laughs> members of the BRDC. If you if you look at whenever, um, um, I think that they have like certain rules even for to, to be part of it. So for example, um, obviously Damon Hill is part of it. Uh, Jackie Stewart is He's part of it. 850 dudes. Uh, Probably um, mostly men. What's his name? Brundle is part of it. And when Brundle does like certain like TV shit with his own overalls, you can always tell because they're just plain white and they have oh, one little logo. That logo is the BRDC, the BRDC logo. logo. So uh, Sir, Sir Sterling Moss, also BRDC. Mario Andretti. It's not not only British. Wait, Mario Andretti? Andretti is... He is? He's, He's Roger Penske. He's also an American. Really? They are okay. members. I didn't know that. But anyway, so they control the track. They've been trying to sell lease control of it for a couple of years now. Mm -hmm. But it's kind of interesting that they're separately from the owning of the track, the track hosts the British Grand Prix. Oh. Silverstone hosts the British right, Grand Prix, okay. and they have since the beginning. It was an old British military Air, Air Force base. Uh, written into the contract for the British Grand Prix is a clause that says... Actually, can Canadian, uh, a couple Canadian regiments uh, flew out of there, too. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Uh, I want to find the anyway. There's there's a clause that says this track cannot change hands without permission of Bernie Ecclestone. The control of it. You mean the puppet strings? <laughs> <laughs> the puppet strings, right? Yeah. So I don't know. There um. There there was a deal that's been floating around since like a month or two ago that they're trying to make happen for Jaguar to take control of the track. Oh, shit. And use it as uh, the Jaguar head office and testing facility for Jaguar's cars hmm. and stuff like that. But I guess Bernie's blocking it and using this article to assert himself and say, like, the, the title of the article is Ecclestone Holds the Keys to British Grand Prix Sale. But listen, the, the, the point is that Bernie actually might just want to run Silverstone to the ground. Right, Bernie actually like has an interest. Okay. This is what I believe. Th th as well. th this, this is a thing though. For a long time, there's been the idea that there should be an F1 race in London. Mm -hmm. Okay, wait. wait. Let, let's finish with Silverstone. Okay. Let, let's. Okay, okay, Let's okay. destroy Silverstone. Okay. All right. All right, all right. <laughs> before, before Silverstone, right now, this year they need, or sorry, last year they needed twenty six million dollars was their hosting fee. Okay. I'm not sure actually if it was dollars or pounds. Mm -hmm. But at 26 million currency, <laughs> the, the number, it doesn't exactly Pieces matter. Pieces of eight. It doesn't exactly <laughs> matter. But what happened, I think, five or maybe three years ago, there's a huge piece of land attached to the racetrack okay. that was controlled by forever, I guess, whatever it was there before. That's, uh, I don't know how many, hundreds of acres. Mm -hmm. They 
had uh, control of that, and there was there's sort of a business park there. Okay. That was generating a lot of income for the group that owned Silverstone for the mm-hmm. for the BRDC. Mm-hmm. They gave up control of that a couple of years ago because they needed a lump sum of money to do a bunch of upgrades to the track. To the track that Bernie needed them to do, like the facilities upgrade. They moved. They basically rearranged the the race and they moved, built a new pit facility and they used the old one for a, other, a separate other. starting grid for other races. Oh, okay. There's a bunch of configurations for the track. They, they built like that, like that indent thing instead of like it being like a like a thing that it now it goes down right like that that was well, all part of it yeah so this gave up control of that to get a lump of money to do these things that bernie needed them to do the thing with the hosting fee is that uh silverstone has the contract for the british grand prix until 2026 but there's a stipulation that every year the hosting fee goes up five percent so the British race is already the most expensive tickets of any race in the world. Holy Even more expensive shit. than going to Monaco. Yeah. Think about that. 220 oh. pounds last year. But they, they made a record attendance, but they're just sort of their uh, accountants have proven like you can't really put the price much higher and expect anyone to come. Yeah. So, <laughs> so Fuck. basically they're in a position that, and it's also one of the only races that doesn't have any government funding behind it no Mm, government backing the government of almost every country that a f1 races in pays for some of it or at least puts up the money to get everything moving right so there's there's big uh like government of canada banners at the at the at the grand prix race at the the, the oh was that yeah yeah. right we we talked about this at least in like one or two corners yeah Yeah. a few months ago we talked about this the in return for signing the Canadian Grand Prix contract for 10 more years yeah. for Montreal to host it, there was uh, f- the government promised $40 million upgrades to the track. We, we talked about this before, like right, a, a yeah, hospital yeah. F- facilities upgrade. We're going to rebuild the pit facility. Like the, like the, the teams wanted bigger garages, more up-to-date garages. Yeah. Right. The Piranha Club facilities. Yeah. I guess <laughs> you need some yeah. new TVs and some leather couches yeah. in there. Um, but... As Jay was saying, ba- basically the terms are such that they're fucked. Right. Bernie's not going to let them sell it <laughs> no. so that they could get money to host, continue hosting the race. And as you said, they, we, there was ho- talk of a London GP about two or three years ago. Yeah, I lo- I, I, a big part of like not the, that, that you couldn't race in London before was because these cars were too too loud too right. m- much too loud uh, it wouldn't approve like like the, the, the city councils or whatever it would be a hard sell mm-hmm. um now now they're actually not that loud and formula e already does uh, a race in london um, formula e does two races two, in yeah london. two, two oh. races back to back right yeah yeah um so it the interest has been growing more and more there definitely is there is a way to do an F1 race in London. Mm-hmm. Plans have been around for a while. Can you go just... over the bridge, please? <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, they, they would do it in a way that, it, that, that that's the point. Like, to make it so... They're, they're going to try to, like, make it so that it does bring up at least some of the monuments of the city. Right. Or at least some of the most important, like, <coughs> like maybe, like, even... They were even saying of... Um, like, doing, like, a like a sort of a hairpin around uh, Buckingham Palace. Oh, cool. That, so, I think that was <clears throat> proposed in... When this came up about two, in 2012, uh, I think that was part of that. Yeah. But, and now they're more pushing on Hyde Park, which I, I think which, the Formula E is near there, isn't it? Something? Uh, Battersea Park. Bat- oh, okay. So yeah. Right, but right, but right, anyway, right. yeah, Hyde Park is a big park. And yeah, you it's can, like you can do central, a lot. For Americans, it's like the Central Park of London. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or the High Park of Toronto. Yeah. <laughs> Hyde, Hyde Park, High Park. But yeah. it's, it's their big park, yeah. And it's really it, exciting. You, you actually, interestingly, uh, like if they actually do end up doing it uh, near Hyde Park, uh, Bernie's uh, Bernie's offices are like basically oh, yeah, two blocks away that is right. from he, Prince's his, Gate. His office overlooks and the part he lives above it overlooks the park. Right? It, it yeah part part of it does like the the top of it would yeah I mean, no, it's, it's not it's not all not in the entire building because there's like yeah, so picture, there's like before. a street in between mm. with like some some construction <laughs> there but if you go high up enough in bernie's, bernie's office you can see down on high five <laughs> 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 um it, it, but it would be i think it would be brilliant to have and i, th- I think i would like to have a race in london and th- but the point is that Hell yeah two british races are unsustainable there's mm. just like the British, fr- like it, a race in London would kill attendance uh, for uh, for the British Grand Prix 
um, in in Silverstone. It, yeah. it just would yeah. N- not because it would be or not just because it would be a, a new race and because they probably like find a way to like make it really cool, but also because the people that would like you know, the British people that would have gone to Silverstone that are from London or or the surroundings, they're gonna prefer to go. Uh, to London, they stay at home, save some money that way. Mm-hmm. The camping was expensive and not very good. Yeah. At Silverstone, anyway. Um, it's far. The, it, here's a related quote: the uh, the guy behind this. Mm-hmm. This is actually going to be. They're changing the road traffic act of England before Parliament within the next few months to make this happen. So there's a conservative MP named Sir Greg Knight, and he is the chairman of English Parliament's Historic Vehicles Group. And uh, his his exact quote is, "This will open the sport up to the public who don't have 220 pounds to get into an F1 race." Wow. Yeah. And the 220 pounds is like for GA tickets, like what we took, what we wow. got in Montreal, where you you yeah, got to stand for, yeah, on, for the shitty seats. You yeah. get to bring a lawn chair and sit in the grass. The the grandstands are in, so, in the hundreds. Up yeah. there. So, yeah, but yeah, but that was like a very in, particular yeah, shot sure, at yeah. that whole Silverstone. Um, More or less, yeah. I'm sure. Obviously, yeah. he's uh, being lobbied from behind by oh, Bernie, yeah. right? Bernie's Bur- Bernie's getting articles in Forbes to assert his. So uh, two hundred twenty uh, British pounds is four hundred forty-four Canadian dollars. Where do we get it? We we got our tickets on for like sale, 70 but we're seventy-six bucks. bucks. Yeah, seventy-six Whoa, seventy-six dollars right? paid yeah, for. Much. Yeah, for, for for not even grandstands. So uh, yeah, it's we man, we got our tickets on a half-price deal. They're normally that is one fifty. Unreasonable. But, yeah, yeah. So it's two and a half times, anyways. Yeah. Plus, mo- the Montreal race is in Montreal. It's right yeah. downtown. Yeah, you can get off a subway and you're at the front door. Whereas which we didn't take. <laughs> the, <laughs> the British race is very, very far from London. Walked every time. Yeah, it's a, yeah. It's a long bus ride. An hour and forty five minutes or so yeah. away. Well, almost two hours away. And it's in the middle of nowhere. A lot of people hate yeah. it because you can't like it's it's very it's an inconvenience yeah. right to go to go all the way out there. And honestly, I mean, as much as I like Silverstone and as much as I. Um, uh, as I think it has produced like good races, and it's not a bad track. Um, I, if I had to give up Silverstone to have a race in London, I'd say yeah. Like, that's that. Not only does that make sense, but it could be better altogether. A Silverstone track is for, like uh, it's one of my favorites. Yeah, but would you really like? I think. No, yeah, at I'd, least I'd give it up. For, I'd give it up for a London yeah. Grand Prix downtown for yeah. sure, absolutely. <laughs> but, but as far as it's, like, it's in the same say, way. Say if, okay, if listen, I'm playing the Formula One video game, same way, I'll pick that. It's in the same way that I, I would prefer, like, you know, as much as I as I as I'm nostalgic about Monza, and I like, I do say like, oh, you know, the, Mon- the you know the Monza can't go away. Yeah, I'm, but, I'm less enthusiastic. Yeah, for Monza. But if they did a race what? around uh, Milan. Or yeah, or or even Rome. I'd be like, yeah, okay, yeah, Mons has gotta go. <laughs> this yeah, imagine yeah. that's it. <laughs> imagine a huge curve around the Colosseum. Yeah, something yeah, like yeah. That? Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Sure. Yeah, I would, I would say so. And and come on, it's it's it looks cool. And 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 a lot of uh, F one fans do say like you know street car or street races are. You know, are they the worst because you know they, they don't show the cars like full ability? Come on, they they are cool still. Of course they are. Yeah, They're, I like them more personally. <laughs> yeah. I, most of them I like more. Um, but yeah, the, this is great. It looks like it's going to happen. Like they're determined. They, maybe they maybe in twenty twenty six. I think no, it's not going to take that long, man. They're pushing this through. They're well, Bernie Ecclestone is w- destroying the Silverstone British Grand Prix. Uh, absolutely. Why would that? That's he's, what that article's about. He's, he's not going to allow them to sell it. They've been trying yeah. for five years, mm-hmm. and he's been pushing. He's got this guy, member of parliament on his side. They've got Formula E the past two years, massive success. Yeah. No problems with shutting down the roads. Nope. Because apparently right now, the way that the Road Traffic Act is, a lot of British laws are really old. Mm-hmm. So it takes months or up to a year, as far as I've, as far as far I read into this, for to get the licensing and everything from local council and everything. Part of it is big thing to do with the noise and mm-hmm. shutting down the streets. Yes. Because mm-hmm. li- there's a lot of one way streets and yeah, totally. horse roads and stuff in, in, in London. <laughs> there used to be horse roads. So it's a big, big problem, but they, I guess they've proven now they can do it. They're trying really hard. Bernie wants it Bernie, outside his Bernie office. Definitely wants it. Yeah. yeah. And he's got, parliament legislation going before parliament says within this, months this year within months yeah they're expecting it to pass before the end of this year wow to basically allow the local councils of london to basically shut down roads and not have to go through parliament to get a license 
Even uh, Sterling Moss, who was in F1 back in like from back yeah, in the I day, I saw him talking about it. Yeah, they almost did it one time. Yeah, yeah, apparently it was it was almost done, but Scotland Yard shut it down. The local police before the internet and stuff, they had this race set up to go. And yeah, the, but the police shut it down before it happened. And you know, on safety grounds, but this was also before the FIA uh, was like you know big into safety. Amco, I think before right. Amco was invented, yeah, people were just sitting on the sidewalk. Uh, it's <laughs> type thing. And and even even Sterling Moss says that yeah, it would be fantastic. It would be. It would be great to have a freaking yes. London race. Yeah. Make it happen. Yeah, I want to see it. More now, city ones. Now, city now Bernie is not. Like that, you know, it's it's kind of suffocating the the British Grand Prix of Silverstone thing, right? And maybe he has a future in mind for for London race. And then on the other hand, now he he's turning around and saying that there shouldn't be, a, there's no worries, there's no concerns with the with the U.S. Grand Prix, even though we know that they're not sitting on solid footing right now. Hmm. Yeah, so I don't know. They made an announcement yesterday that uh, more or less reiterated what Bernie said, and this was from. I forget the exact title, but he's the head of the track, the chairman or whatever. Yeah. He said, yeah, it's, I can't say a hundred percent, but it looks like it. And this is our fifth year. Everyone's looking forward to it. It's, you know, it's, it's, a, they have about a 7 million shortfall in government money because of the attendance was down this year because right. they got hit with that hurricane. Ah, uh, so, right. So that, that's what's up in the air, but I think they should be able to find 7 million. It's kind of a big deal. But again, there's 21 races on the calendar. The Concord Agreement says 20. There's, there's nobody's mentioned it in any of these news articles. But one of these races still might not happen. Yeah, it's, it's still nothing. might not. Maybe Spa, maybe Monza, maybe uh, United States. Oh, Bernie goodness. probably knows which one it is, or at least which one he wants it to be. Yeah, or maybe he doesn't want any to be any of them. I don't, but <laughs> really, yeah. You know what I mean. If if the teams take that to to arbitration, like they're gonna they're gonna win because it's already been written down. Twenty races, right. that's it. Right. Yeah, they cannot be forced to race the twenty races, or you know more than twenty races. Right. And anyway, a decision has been promised for the end of February. Do you think though that that it that maybe Bernie's angle this year is gonna be, you know what, you don't have to race the twenty races, but the there's gonna be like people out there that don't have enough points that maybe they'll they'll make that their 20th race the joker race yeah like a joker so let's say if you're if you're in the so if you're in mikanda you go skip spa maybe your monza or the yeah. power track and just go to the yeah go to the other one get some points there save your penalty the wear and tear and trying to push the engine 200 percent for two hours right? why not right <laughs> Like I that could know. be some. That could be a team. Like one team's angle. Yeah, this layered on top yeah. of the cliff. Yeah, <laughs> right. For sure. Uh do we have like? In, you had some something else about an extra other track. No, that's it. Oh, that's it. Okay. That's it. <laughs> but that's all. It's. It, but again, okay. Yeah, Baku gonna be great. Silverstone. It's gonna it, be great still, but London would be better. Yeah. It's not yeah. happening this year, but could next year. Take a look. It's on the Formula E race, the London race. It looks pretty awesome. Yeah. Cool. Check it out. So so today's, today's the meeting. The, ha, the, Pirelli. the Pirelli meeting. In Italy. In Italy. Very interesting. Right. The secret side meeting for 2017. The, but we don't know anything about that. Really. Nothing has come out yet because, you know, right, yeah, on account of it being a secret Happening meeting. now, sort of. <laughs> just happening today it's it probably but, hasn't even ended these meetings apparently go like to late man go like all night yeah, yeah. with hundreds of millions of dollars yeah yeah um, order, order some nice pizza you know <laughs> <laughs> what like some what, italian pizza what is you know go 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 for some nice uh uh milani milanese aperitivo should be nice <laughs> Should be nice for them. No, but I think I will. I mean, obviously, it's in Milan because Pirelli wanted them to go to Italy. Right. Yeah. But there's a per special Pirelli called meeting. But uh, Bernie uh, called yeah. everybody else so they could have an extra meeting before the real strategy group meeting next month, February 23rd. Because March March 1st is the signed deadline for 2017 rules to be That's finalized. Right. That's forever. when they need to be like right. Unless fast. Well finalized without unanimous consent beyond march 1st 
and like, especially if they're bringing you. around a revolution as we've been promised for yeah, <laughs> for the that, past year and a half that goes to show you man holy shit so to prepare for the last year the, the team what like within the first quarter of the year they already start thinking of next year yeah that's what that's insane yeah yeah well i think uh, bi- a bigger part i think possibly is pirelli needs a huge lead time especially that's if they're going to yes. change the entire construction of, which is still possible Two, two days ago, I had this meeting, uh, Bernie came out and said that he believes, in quotes, one million percent that Formula One <laughs> should go back to and be about maximum attack racing, which okay. is not what he said in 2010 when he signed Pirelli to bring in these cliff tires. Right. But he said two days ago, Formula One needs to be maximum attack, one million percent. So... Is maybe that's the way we're going now for 2017 but how, like how, how is that even gonna come to play i mean th- see the thing is that completely this, new tires but this basically <laughs> call back call michelin back hey remember uh, we said you guys <laughs> uh we didn't want you to build tires for us <laughs> change their minds no but okay listen th- th- this is obviously um in the back of that one meeting that happened before christmas um where the, the, the teams were like, oh, you know, we're going to have to come up with these crazy new aero and it's not going to be ground effect. It's just going to be like they're going to be, you know, b- bigger wings and more flexibility on the wings. It's just going to be crazier with the aero, the aero that we know right now. Mm-hmm. This aero is just they're just going to, you know, amp up the craziness on it. And then Pirelli went and said, no, no, you can't, because if you if you go ahead and do that, we're just going to have to make tires that are stronger. And, th- and because they're going to be stronger tires. Um, what they, what they gonna, first it's said. It's going to slow everything down, so it's going to negate the effect that the that the, that the higher gri- or the the higher downforce. What they what they first said is that the current tires could take it, but they'd have to be run six, seven, eight psi more, which the ty- the teams don't want. Yes, they said the tires could take it, the construction, and that three seconds is more realistic. The original five second max grip idea is gone. Because, oh yeah, because and of I, that, it, it, because. It, it, it does it does it doesn't make sense and five seconds fast having the cars five seconds faster doesn't necessarily it's not gonna guarantee you anything it's not gonna guarantee you that the that that the racing is gonna be closer that, uh, yeah. that the and cars it, are gonna be more difficult in fact to drive. every driver has been screaming against it since the idea was floated yeah because every driver is against it because they know the that's not the answer yeah the yeah. aerodynamic wake the the disturbance zone the dirty air you can't drive close behind so now now hopefully cooler heads prevail or will prevail and and they they do go back to more of a revolution as opposed to an evolution of the of the current rules right well there's a secret revolution this year happening with pirelli let let me say this first in in 2011 for those that are newer to f1 Mm -hmm. pirelli became the sole tire supplier to formula one with a mandate from bernie that the tires should wear out quicker they should have uh, a drop-off point to force pit stops and force drivers to like play save their tires and cause closer racing and be more careful about the, f- the fighting <laughs> so this is co- they used something called the thermal degradation mm-hmm. that if that, you that drove there used to be two shots right <laughs> 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 two, two, two shots of beer yeah <laughs> But the idea behind those tires, the construction of them was if you drove them too hard and they reached a, cer- a certain temperature, the rubber went above a certain temperature, it would change, the compound would change its consistency irreversibly and the tire, that was the cliff. But the problem with these that tires... The cliff was also, I think it was one, one shot. <laughs> what I'm referring to is that um, the, b- back yeah. in the day when we were watching the races together... Uh, 2011-12 like, was the, the drinking game of tires. Yeah, because... because <laughs> Every single race, man, they would just talk like, and, you know, in the pre-show, they would they would talk about tires during the race. The tires was was, was the, all the talking. Like honestly, man, every two minutes you couldn't, like you couldn't go more than five minutes without hearing, you know, tires. Don't thermal forget, degradation. This degradation. was before the new engines. Yeah, Pirelli. this is back when we still had the V8s. Yeah, they, they first brought wow. this Pirelli. Yeah, Pirelli. Ther- yeah, each one of those like would be like one drink. Some some of the terms like thermal degradation that would be like two drinks, and that was our, that was our drinking game. Cliff was 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 definitely one of one of them in there, and I guess the cliff is coming back in a totally different way though. So 2011, 12, and 2011 and 12, they used this thermal degradation, and but 
especially in 2012 and into 2013, oh, there's a lot of accidents. The delaminations, mm-hmm. that was Remember three when, drinks. Remember like, the tires just like just, just unraveled? Yeah. Unraveled. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, the, introduct, the intro clip from Sky from two years ago was that clip of the, ty- the tire carcass almost killing it was a, a lot the, yeah they, no there, and uh, actually this year there was one scene i think it was rosberg tire um like just this just the circular part that goes around like the belt around it kind of like came loose from everything else and it right. like continued on its way it was hilarious but so, <laughs> vettel at spa he was yeah. even this year was close to sort of uh death he was 100 meters from going into the wall so but in into 2011 and 12 the tires were coming apart a lot and there were a bunch of punctures because of the construction so in the halfway through 2013 they switched the type of tires they were using it went okay. to a stronger tire and then after 2014 they changed the construction of the back tires to make them stronger because these new motors have so much torque with the, the right. turbocharger and the electric power mm-hmm. so they've, they've sort of evolved but they moved away from that thermal degradation because they couldn't make them safe and en- safe enough right but this new concept is called the undertread layer. The undertread layer. Undertread layer. Right. So you remember we talked about the Abu Dhabi test at the end of the the final race of the year. That we thought that it was going to be the uh, for the XWED. Right. Well, yeah. Well, the, that's the teams kind of thought that too. Oh, there right. was media. The media was banned from from the test. <laughs> this this happened on the I think the Tuesday and Wednesday after the final race. Okay. Yes. 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 Yeah, in yeah, December in Abu Dhabi. The teams weren't told until the day after the test that they were testing some new prototypes for 2015 that have a, this cliff built in. But the the undertread layer is at 70% wear, 70% of the layer of the rubber. Right. Instead of the rubber changing consistency, it's just a different layer of a different type of rubber, a harder mm-hmm. rubber. So the tire is strong and it turns to shit at 70% after you burn off 70% of the rubber. <laughs> Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, the, that's the, that's where we're at. So for this year, though, something that hasn't been talked about yet, really, by I would I guess it's the broadcaster's responsibility. Mm-hmm. There's a new tie-up between FOM and Pirelli okay. to put a a ton of tired data on the screen for us, because teams now are going to have their full range of sets, three different types to choose from, the ten tires. Yeah. Right? And uh, so there's going to be a new graphic system done by Pirelli that's sh- going to show you what each driver's got in the garage, what they've used, oh, where cool. they're at on their wear levels, <coughs> possibly maybe their temperature. That was that was actually one of the suggestions that actually, if, if I'm not mistaken, that actually came from those surveys that like they they that they yeah. had earlier. Uh, and last this year. this year they're bringing yeah. it, they're bringing that in to they're, so they're hoping that this new cliff will bring some of the kind of action we had in 2011-12 because it, it was really crazy. Nobody knew what was going on. Like yeah. Cars were just pulling in at see, like all seven, different kinds of strategies. Seven different race winners in the first seven races. That yeah. hadn't been seen. Whoa. There's yeah. more practice on the tires now, but it's a whole, there's a new compound. Yeah. That seems the, like it changes things fundamentally. Something else interesting. We talked uh, a couple, whatever it was, maybe a month ago already. The team's had to choose they were given the selections by Pirelli they had to choose what tires they're bringing to the first three races right and then to Russia as well afterwards now right but they weren't told about this cliff until after everybody's choices were in if you didn't know that so, really? so the first three that races chance. at least are going to be completely in the air because the teams didn't know that the cliff nice. was built into these tires they assumed that they had a a softer option which isn't actually available at the first three races yeah and they assume that they are coming on the same tires as they had that's an underhanded sneak <laughs> attack <laughs> <But> good <laughs> yeah yes. sort of but like lying it's gonna be fun to watch yeah, yeah no it's gonna be fun to watch but if i were um if i were a competitor i'd be very upset it's definitely like it's a waste. Of, like it's throw, a waste throw, of time. Yeah, throwing a bunch of calculations out the window. Yeah, he was like, yeah. "Well, fuck that." <laughs> <laughs> oh Jesus! Like that? <laughs> like <it> dropping mics? <laughs> no, that's yeah. that's weird. But I guess it's exciting. It's gonna be exciting. I it's think, going I think, to be. Yeah, I think it's it's, it's, it's kind of like it, I can see how. Yes, yeah, like, if, if, if you're if you're cynic, I'm upset. if you're no, cynic I'm upset. about it, 
you can you can say that it's it's almost like artificially added now like you know like a strategy shuffle right which, like sprinklers. which it kind of is <laughs> but it's not yeah but it's not quite like sprinkles this is actually going to be very very exciting to watch right like it's 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 not going to feel too artificial i know that it's not because if it if yeah if it's just bringing things back to how it was in 2012 yeah, yeah the, the only the reason they stopped <laughs> the reason they stopped doing that was because they proved their con- their con- entire construction was dangerous yeah and drivers almost died like here's a well, we, we don't have to bring it up, but picture of the, the lamination there. You can find a whole bunch. There, there were a lot actually of the yeah. laminations through, oh, yeah. throughout the practice qualies and uh, and the races. But uh, hopefully, those won't be back. Even though there was one this year too, right? Right. They changed those back tires. Yeah. Know, but then the pressure, or whatever. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm sure. Whatever. P- P- Pirelli's gonna be able to handle it. Even those crashes were uh, like meaning could have gone a lot worse than they actually did go. Uh, I think I think we're still we're still in the safe territory with this, and it would be nice to see back to, to bring back the cliff. <laughs> Let's bring it back. Bring yeah. it back. Yeah. But it might only be for this one year because by March first today, Bernie's going to be pushing this max Mar- attack. March first is not today. No, but the <laughs> the, me- the meeting t- today, Bernie yeah. is going to be pushing. Yeah. For March first. The me- yeah. the meeting the max attack though. Yes. Right. Okay. So for yeah for. Today he'll be pushing the opposite that of, of what he's promoting he's, this year. It's because he Complete already he, he already lost one battle with the engines thing, and oh, he he hasn't given up on that. Though. No, he hasn't given up on that for sure. <laughs> Listen, I think maximum attack is definitely what the fans want, but the pin like I'm sure that like them in defining what maximum attack is. That's that's where they might. That sounds like a, a superhero move from a Japanese anime. <laughs> If you, if, you, if you go back on YouTube though, you don't have to watch a whole race, but and we're gonna have to do it on the show either. But just just the listeners, go look at like two thousand six, seven, eight, somewhere around there, and just watch, just Google uh, Formula One battle or something, yeah, and watch how different they were then. Yes, so it's like a different style of racing. They were pushing like like as as hard as they could, whereas now it's it's more of you see them fighting the grip and everything, right. I think the last thing they need is to go back to get rid of the computers in the car. Those computers. Too much data. The car is controlled. They're taking our jobs. Yeah. They, the car is re- half remote controlled by 50 engineers in a control center like NASA has. Right. It's crazy. Yeah. I don't like it. <laughs> now, it, it, like it, it, it. It is one of those things that's not very popular. Faux show. It's not. Yeah. Anyways, I guess we'll hopefully we'll have some answers, some real answers that aren't going to change again next week. Yeah, hopefully, yeah, hopefully by this time next week, all everything that came out of uh, these meetings in, uh, in in Milan, we'll be able to know the outcome, and we mm-hmm. will keep you guys posted with what we think about it. Let's talk about all the bullshit stories of the week now. So today's today's the meeting, the half the Pirelli, the Pirelli meeting in Italy, in Italy. Very interesting, right? The secret side meeting for 2017, the, but we don't know anything about that, really. Nothing has come out yet, because you know, right, yeah, on account of it being a secret, happening meeting. now, sort of, <laughs> just happening today. It's, it probably but, hasn't even ended. These meetings apparently go like till late, man. Go like all night. Yes. Yeah, with hundreds of millions of dollars. Yeah, yeah. Um, order, order some nice pizza, you know. <laughs> <laughs> what like some what Italian you- pizza? What is you know go 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 for some nice uh, uh, Milani Milanese aperitivo should be nice <laughs> should be nice for them no but I, I think I will I mean obviously it's in Milan because Pirelli wanted them to go to Italy right yeah. but there's a per- special Pirelli called meeting but uh, Bernie it, called everybody yeah. else so they could have an extra meeting before the real strategy group meeting next month February twenty third because March March first is the signed deadline for 2017 rules to be that's finalized right, yeah, that's why they need to be like right unless fast well finalized without unanimous consent beyond march 1st and like, especially if they're that goes to show you, bringing man. around a revolution as we've been promised for yeah, <laughs> for the that, past year and a half that goes to show you man holy shit so to prepare for the last year the, the team what like within the first quarter of the year they already start thinking of next year yeah that's what that's insane yeah yeah. Well, I think a uh, bi- a bigger part, I think, possibly, is Pirelli needs a huge lead time, especially That's if they're going to yes. change 
the entire construction, of, which is still possible. Two, two days ago, ahead of this meeting, uh, Bernie came out and said that he believes, in quotes, one million percent that Formula One <laughs> should go back to and be about maximum attack racing, which okay. is not what he said in 2010 when he signed Pirelli to bring in these cliff tires. Right. But he said two days ago, Formula One needs to be maximum attack, one million percent. So is, maybe that's the way we're going now for 2017. But how, like, how, how is that even going to come to play? I mean, th- see, the thing is that... Completely this, new tires. But this Basically, <laughs> <laughs> call, back, call Michelin back. Hey, remember uh, we said you guys, <laughs> uh, we didn't want you to build tires for us? <laughs> <laughs> Change their minds. No, but okay, listen, th- th- this is obviously um, in the back of that one meeting that happened before Christmas um, where the, the, the teams were like, oh, you know, we're going to have to come up with this crazy new arrow and it's not going to be ground effect. It's just going to be like, they're going to be, you know, b- bigger wings and more flexibility on the wings. It's gonna, just going to be crazier with the arrow, the arrow that we know right now, mm-hmm. this arrow is just, they're just going to, you know, amp up the craziness on it. And then Pirelli went and said, no, no, you can't because if you, if you go ahead and do that, we're just going to have to make tires that are stronger. And, th- and because they're going to be stronger tires, um, what they, it's what gonna, they first it's said, gonna slow everything down, so it's gonna negate the effect that the that the, that the higher gri- or the the higher downforce. What they what they first said is that the current tires could take it, but they'd have to be run six, seven, eight psi more, which the ty- the teams don't want. Yes, they said the tires could take it, the construction, and that three seconds is more realistic. The original five second max grip idea is gone. Because, oh yeah, because and of I, that, it, 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 because. It, <laughs> it, it does. It does. It doesn't make sense. And five seconds fast. Having the cars five seconds faster doesn't necessarily. It's not going to guarantee you anything. It's not going to guarantee you that that the that, that the racing is going to be closer. That, uh, yeah. that the and cars are going to be more difficult. In fact, to drive. every driver has been screaming against it since the idea was floated. Yeah, because every it, driver is against it because they know the that wake. that's not the answer. Yeah, the yeah. aerodynamic wake, the the disturbance zone, the dirty air. You can't drive close behind. So now now. Hopefully, cooler heads prevail or will prevail, and and they they do go back to more of a revolution as opposed to an evolution of the of the current rules. Right. Well, there's a secret revolution this year happening with Pirelli. Let, let me say this first. In yeah. in 2011, okay. for those that are newer to F1, mm-hmm. Pirelli became the sole tire supplier to Formula One with a mandate from Bernie that the tires should wear out quicker they should have uh, a drop-off point to force pit stops and force drivers to like play save their tires and cause closer racing and be more careful about the the fighting (laughs) so this is they used something called the thermal degradation Mm -hmm. that if you drove there used to be two shots right (laughs) 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 two 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 shots of beer yeah (laughs) but the idea behind those tires the construction of them was if you drove them too hard and they reached a a certain temperature the rubber went above a certain temperature it would change the compound would change its consistency irreversibly and the tire that was the cliff but the problem with these that tires the cliff was also i think it was one one shot <laughs> what i'm referring to is that um the, b- back yeah. in the day when we were watching the races together uh we'd 2011 be like, 12 was the the drinking game of tires yeah because, <laughs> because every single race man they would just talk like and you know in the pre-show they would they would talk about tires during the race the tires what was was the, all the talk like honestly man every two minutes you couldn't like you couldn't go more than five minutes without hearing, you know, tires, Don't thermal forget, degradation. This degradation. was before the new engines. Yeah, Pirelli. this is back when we still had the V8s. Yeah, they, f- they first brought wow. this Pirelli. Yeah, Pirelli. Ther- yeah, each one of those like would be like one drink. Some some of the terms like thermal degradation that would be like two drinks, and that was our, that was our drinking game. Cliff was 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 definitely one of one of them in there, and it's, I guess the cliff is coming back in a totally different way though. So 2011, 12, and. 2011 and 12, they used this thermal degradation, and but especially in 2012 and into 2013, oh, there's a lot of accidents. The delaminations mm-hmm. that was Remember three when, drinks. Remember like, when the tires just like just <laughs> unraveled? <laughs> unraveled. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, the introduct the intro clip from Sky from two years ago was that clip of the tire the tire carcass almost 
killing. It was a, a lot. The, yeah, they, no, there, and uh, actually this year there was one scene. I think it was Rosberg tire, um, like just this, just the circular part that goes around, like the belt around it, kind of like came loose from everything else, and it like right. continued on its way. It was hilarious. <laughs> but Vettel at Spa, he was yeah. even this year was close to sort of uh, death. He was a hundred meters from going into the wall. So, but in into 2011 and 12, the tires were coming apart a lot, and there were a bunch of punctures because of the construction. So, in the halfway through 2013, they switched the type of tires they were using. They went okay. to a stronger tire, and then after 2014, they changed the construction of the back tires to make them stronger because these new motors have so much torque with the, the turbocharger right. and the electric power. Mm -hmm. So they've, they've sort of evolved. But they moved away from that thermal degradation because they couldn't make them safe and safe enough. Right. But this new concept is called the undertread layer. The undertread layer. Undertread layer. Right. So you remember we talked about the Abu Dhabi test at the end of the the final race of the year. That we thought that it was going to be the uh, for the XWED. Right. Well, yeah. Well, the, that's the teams kind of thought that too. Oh, there right. was media. The media was banned. From from the test, <laughs> this this happened on the I think the Tuesday and Wednesday after the final race. Okay, yes, 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 yeah, in Abu December Dhabi. in Abu Dhabi, the teams weren't told until the day after the test that they were testing some new prototypes for 2015 that have a, this cliff built in. But the the undertread layer is at 70% wear, 70% of the layer of the rubber. Right. Instead of the rubber changing consistency, it's just a different layer of a different type of rubber, a harder mm -hmm. rubber. So the tire is strong, and it turns to shit at seventy percent after you burn off seventy percent of the rubber. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, uh, that's that, that's where we're at. So for this year, though, something that hasn't been talked about yet, really, by I would I guess it's the broadcaster's responsibility. Mm -hmm. There's a new tie-up between FOM and Pirelli okay. to put a a ton of tire data on the screen for us. Because teams now are going to have their full range of sets, three different types to choose from, the 10 tires. Yeah. Right? And uh, so there's going to be a new graphic system done by Pirelli that's going to show you what each driver's got in the garage, what they've used, oh, where cool. they're at on their wear levels, <clears throat> possibly maybe their temperature. That was that was actually one of the suggestions that actually, if, if I'm not mistaken, that actually came from those surveys that like they, they, that they yeah. had earlier. Uh, and this year. this year they're bringing yeah. it, they're bringing that in to they're so they're hoping that this new cliff will bring some of the kind of action we had in 2011 12 because it it was really crazy nobody knew what was going on like yeah cars were just pulling in at see, like all seven, different kinds of strategies seven different race winners in the first seven races that right. hadn't been seen whoa there's yeah. more practice on the tires now but it's a whole there's a new compound yeah that seems like it changes things fundamentally. Something else interesting. We talked uh, a couple, whatever it was, maybe a month ago already. The teams had to choose. They were given the selections by Pirelli. They had to choose what tires they're bringing to the first three races. Right. And then to Russia as well afterwards. Now, right? But they weren't told about this cliff until after everybody's choices were in. If you didn't know that. So, really? so the first three races yes. at least are going to be completely in the air because the teams didn't know that the cliff nice. was built into these tires. They assumed that they had a, a softer option, which isn't actually available at the first three races. Yeah. And they assumed that they were coming on the same tires as they had. That's an underhanded sneak attack. <laughs> but <by> good. <laughs> yeah, yes. sort of. But like lying <laughs> it's gonna be fun to watch yeah, yeah no it's gonna be fun to watch but if i were um if i were a competitor i'd be very upset it's definitely like throwing it's a waste of, like it's a waste throw, of yeah, time throwing a bunch of calculations out the window yeah it's like, like, like well yeah. fuck that <laughs> oh jesus like that <laughs> like drop it mic <laughs> no that's yeah. that's weird but I guess it's exciting. It's gonna be exciting. I it's think, gonna I think, be. Yeah, I think it's it's, it's, it's kind of like it, I can see how. Yes, yeah, like, if, 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 if you're cynic, upset. if you're no, cynic I'm about upset. it, you can you can say that it's it's almost like artificially added now, like you know, like a strategy shuffle, right? Which, like sprinklers, which it kind of is, <laughs> but it's not. Yeah, but it's not quite like sprinkles. This is actually gonna be 
very, very exciting to watch. Right. Like it's 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 not gonna feel too artificial. I know that it's not because if it, if yeah if it's just bringing things back to how it was in 2012. Yeah. yeah the the only the reason they stopped <laughs> the reason they stopped doing that was because they proved their con- their entire construction was dangerous. Yeah. And drivers almost died. But here's a well we, we don't have to bring it up but picture of the, the lamination there. You can find a whole bunch. There, there were a lot actually of delaminations yeah. through, oh, yeah. throughout the practice qualies, and uh, and the races. But uh, hopefully those won't be back. Even though there was one this year too, right? Right. They changed those back tires. Yeah. Know, but then gonna, the pressure, whatever. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm sure. Whatever. P- P- Pirelli's gonna be able to handle it. Even those crashes were uh, like meaning could have gone a lot worse than they actually did go. Uh, I think. I think we're still. We're still in the safe territory with this, and it would be nice to see back to, to bring back the cliff. Let's bring it back. <laughs> bring yeah. it back. Yeah, but it might only be for this one year because by March first today, Bernie's going to be pushing this max Mar- attack. March first is not today. No, but the <laughs> the, me- the meeting t- today, Bernie yeah. is going to be pushing. Yeah, for the, March first. The, me- yeah. the meeting, the max attack, though. Yes. Right. Okay. So for yeah, for today, he'll be pushing the opposite. That of, it, of what he's promoting he's, this year because he Complete already he, he already lost one battle with the engines thing and he, oh, he, he hasn't given up on that though. no he, he hasn't given up on that for sure <laughs> listen I think maximum attack is definitely what the fans want but the pin like I'm sure that like them in defining what maximum attack is that's that's where they might that sounds like a, a superhero move from a Japanese anime <laughs> If you, if, you, if you go back on YouTube though, you don't have to watch the whole race, but and we're gonna have to do it on the show either. But just just the listeners, go look at like two thousand six, seven, eight, somewhere around there, and just watch, just Google uh, Formula One battle or something, yeah, and watch how different they were then. Yes, it's, it's like a different style of racing. They were pushing like like as as hard as they could, whereas now it's it's more of you see them fighting the grip and everything, right. I think the last thing they need is to go back to get rid of the computers in the car. Those computers. Too much data. The car is controlled. They're taking our jobs. Yeah. Yeah, they, the they car can... is re- half remote controlled by 50 engineers in the control center like NASA has. Right. It's crazy. Yeah. I don't like it. <laughs> not, it, 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 like it, it. It is one of those things that's not very popular. Faux show. Anyways, I guess we'll hopefully we'll have some answers, some real answers that aren't going to change again next week. Yeah, hopefully, yeah, hopefully by this time next week, all everything that came out of uh, these meetings in, uh, in in Milan, we'll be able to know the outcome, and we mm-hmm. will keep you guys posted with what we think about it. Let's talk about all the bullshit stories of the week now. Mm-hmm. It was when we when we like to just. Uh, Jab and poke fun at some of the old other lesser stories throughout the week. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Not just Maldonado. Not just Maldonado. <laughs> no. um, what do you got? Um, what do you want to start? I don't know. There's a there's a whole bunch. What do you want to start with? Okay, so actually, you know what? Why don't we like open the uh, the car? Uh, the, the, you know the the, the, the release because obviously we're now entering February. Yeah. Okay. Soon. Get this boring shit out. Yeah, of the way. yeah. Like, let's get it out of the way. Uh, soon there's gonna be teams actually uh, releasing the cars. It's, that's you know yeah. usually gonna be pretty exciting. That we did uh, last year when we were when we were doing this, we kind of touch on each one as, as they as they came out. Um, this year though, if you go, if you if you look towards the bottom of the calendar, the the last two late uh, two dates are going to be for on the twenty second for Manor and Haas. That's the first day of testing. Yeah, so they're gonna they're gonna leave it right to the first day of testing. Mm. So we can pretty much guarantee that from now until the twenty second, all of these dates are actually gonna get populated, right? Um, right. Yeah, Mc- yeah. McLaren's doing theirs online, <clears throat> not at the track. So the day before that final test, um, I think Red Bull is not showing up until the, the actual test day, but they're doing their they're doing delivery. The- which will probably, I think, on their old car. On on the 17th. Right. right. Yeah. Uh, actually, Renault We're, is supposed to be really soon. Yeah. The, oh, it's tomorrow. Tomorrow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. But th- they're, they're just going to they're just gonna kind of show, like, the concept of the idea. Like, they're right. going to do a presentation. They're going to unveil Team Renault. Yeah. Is they're going to have, they're gonna have right. new colors from Lotus's black and gold, uh, yeah. assuming. It's, as, it's not going to be like a, like a proper car, car launch. And I, I think they're also going to wait till this date, till the first day of, day, uh, of testing, to actually show, like, the car that they're going to be competing. They might show, tomorrow, they might show a car, like, what, maybe, like, last year's Lotus. 
but just all wrapped up in the new livery. Mm. Right. Yeah. There's been some speculation. McLaren finally have a big title sponsor. They showed up with their car to the test all in black. But if you look at uh, like Alonso's and Button's pictures and stuff, they have <clears throat> like a blacked out picture on their coveralls. Blacked out piece. Right, right, Speculation right. that might be Canon, Canon cameras. Oh, okay. But who knows? That's a rumor. That hasn't been unveiled yet. Uh, Toro Rosso, no date or anything. They, no news at all, really, whatsoever. Nah. whatsoever. <laughs> how, how do you say this? Keine <laughs> Angabe. That means nothing. We don't know shit. No <laughs> information. <laughs> yeah. Um, Sauber is going to do it at some point in Barcelona, but they're going to miss. After the first test. Uh, yeah, they're, they're gonna not even it. going to the first test. Yeah, they're not going to be there for the first test. So, yeah. Um, Sauber again in trouble, but uh, this is something that we've come kind of come accustomed to. Maybe they're gonna play it off like Force India did last year and just run their twenty four or the what would be their twenty fifteen car to start the on, year, yeah, yeah to start the year, save money for the revolution, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, Maybe. Other than that, I mean, we can for sure say that most teams by the twenty second, by you know, what's that like twenty days from now? Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. and you, ex- you obviously we expect the Mercedes, Ferraris, and Williams to. Sort of show up and be like, "Yo, oh yeah, no, yeah, Mercedes, they're they're gonna be in full force for all the testing. Yeah, for sure. They, they, yeah, that's the, it. Twenty days, less than three weeks. Yeah. Testing starts. But, but they're gonna do. I mean, it it really has moved to instead of uh, how it used to be, where mm-hmm. they would have like a, a a car launch and it was a big deal where they invited a bunch of big shots and and right. media and whatever. Most of them are just doing an online thing now. Mm. Mm. Ferrari is going ridiculous with this uh, uh, social media contest to, to ready set ready red. set red hashtag. Oh that's all God. I see on on the Twitter feed now. It's just people like posting yeah, pictures it's of an, and it's and whatever. So annoying. Yeah, it's it's not the right approach, Ferrari. <laughs> uh, they're excited. They redesigned their engine with some stolen Mercedes engineers. <laughs> we'll take those. Yeah. The Hondas redesigned their engine with their own engineers who don't really know what they're doing it's playing whack-a-mole as sri said <laughs> <laughs> that was his quote oh man but they're, they're gonna come back with 263 horsepower more remember yeah <laughs> that's the prediction yeah um but other than that All yeah by we'll, themselves. We'll, we'll keep we'll keep an eye on these uh uh these releases we're not gonna really know very much but basically by the end of um one thing that was interesting is that by the end of last year's first testing we sort of knew how everything was gonna pan out, for at least for the first half of the year. Yeah, you know, we had a pretty good idea. Like, the only really good, uh, good, like big upset that you that I w- that nobody saw coming was the Force India car, the the B spec car when they introduced it halfway through the year that it was gonna be that much better, right? right? right. But other than that, I mean, uh, McLaren barely got some running, as they did throughout the year, you know. Uh, right. Ferrari looked strong. Mercedes looked pr- like very strong. So yeah, I think I think, I think you, you, th- there are there are still going to be some interesting takeaways from the first testing at least. Red, we're gonna we're gonna see where Haas is gonna be. Red well, yeah, Red Bull's putting it out in the news that they're gonna be down this year. In down power. in perform down ah. in performance. Haas confident they're gonna be up. Well, they're gonna up be there. Well, it's 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 pretty it's easy a half, to be up from half zero. a Ferrari when you get half a Ferrari under your ass. Yeah. <laughs> Something something interesting about the Renault, yeah, and Red Bull Helmut Marco. Uh, some, sometime last week, he was he, there was a whole article on this interview, but a quote that was interesting was he said Renault. This this is before the Maldonado K Mag news came out, right? But he said Renault should be focused on Red Bull at least this year. That's what, that's what he was trying to assert. <laughs> <laughs> some sort of interview or statement he was trying to assert that Renault's focus for this coming year should just be on red bull not on themselves not themselves that's gonna be hard not to red bull's not even driving a renault anymore right it's gonna be (laughs) dietrich matches also likes to talk a lot a lot of inconsequential stuff (laughs) to kind of to kind of poke the bear yeah that was helmet marco oh helmet Helmet marco is more of a loud mouth putting put up to it perhaps yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> That'll be interesting. Anyway, and Honda too. Like Ferrari's expecting a huge power boost with their stolen Mercedes ideas, and Honda themselves have, I think, put a secret amount of money into their engine. There was a big uh, a Nikkei 
article or interview with Arai this week. And uh, but basically, not, there's nothing really detail in it. Just less um, optimism, I guess. <laughs> but he, he defended his optimism last year saying, you know, we got a whole bunch of new engineers, especially young guys. And I can't go in the media and say, we know our engine is shit and we can't turn off the power because it's going to break because we need to encourage these guys. <laughs> but he's confident, he's confident they've made a big step. But he said he's not allowed by per direct his directive from above to talk about any numbers, not even percentages of increases <laughs> of, of amount of work, hours, so they dimensions, did, nothing. They, they did give him a, a, a gag order, basically. <laughs> More or less, yeah. <laughs> basically he, he said he can't even talk in percentages, but that they have been working 24 hours a day. It's all, all through nonstop. And they're ready, I guess. They're ready. T- today, separately, the owner of NASCAR, he's a New Zealander, I forget, right? I don't know. I think so. I think uh, Hen- it's, it's probably an American. Hendrick. Mm-hmm. Anyways, just a Honda-related because this has been delayed any honda fans the nsx it is coming back it's been delayed uh for a while it's sort of like supposed to be like a mclaren type fighter mm. hybrid five motors in it or something and it was the first one sold for 1.2 million u.s dollars today to new, Z- new, new zealand in, in new zealand 1.8 million new zealand dollars I, th- I think this is just because this is the the new zealand newspaper yeah the, that's just because the owner is new zealandish Oh, okay. Ish, the, like yeah. a little bit. Yeah, the Na- the NASCAR owner. Yeah, I believe, but I'm not 100. percent But it's uh, sold for 1.2 million dollars. 1.8. No, oh, this 1.2. is NZ 1.8. 1.2 right, right, right. million US dollars. That's more for ex- an that's for more a br- expensive than a Veyron. Is it even on? No, no. Is at the th- it's a million pounds. Yeah. yeah, but this car is unproven, right? It's there's uh. <laughs> nobody nobody's driven and it's brand new he bought the first the first one off the line i can't i can't he's wait got for some the, uh i don't know where he got his confidence in honda from but <laughs> yeah i don't know it Who, looks yeah it looks see? pretty bad as and it's probably gonna be like one of those like really 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 like high technology high performance mm-hmm. cars like some of the japanese like need the, the, the nissan uh like high performance ones like very 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 clever but i can't wait to, yeah. for uh uh yeah, jeremy clarkson to sit on it and like tear it apart <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's uh, some kind of hypercar goes 300 0 to 60 in three seconds or something whatever 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 jesus anyway some honda optimism yeah to, to put on top i think there is a reason i think i think they actually like because if you if you think what they what at least the japanese press has said that um Honda actually the, the the internal combustion part of it, they weren't that far behind um, from any other team or from most other teams. What really was killing them was this this issue with their compressor. Right. If you, if you take that at face value and just say, listen, around that recovery system, and all of a sudden you can make a competitive engine. If you if you think in though in those sort of was as easy, it could be as easy as just fixing the compressor. And fixing the technology of the lines, like I, I, I can see the logic behind that. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I can see how if it was just that one part, albeit a huge part mm-hmm. of it, but if it was, if they were able to fix the one part that was causing it all, or causing most of it, then I can say, you know what? Maybe they do stand mm-hmm. a chance. Maybe they they are going to become competitive, and maybe there is something that they they show Alonso and Button to help to like have them stay. Like, like, listen, like. You know, you, 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 you're going to be like that. And the year after is not going to be like that even more. Be- before the end of the year, actually, earlier we were talking about drivers taking years off and what that did for him. This year, you know, what place Alonso would rather be in and all that are yeah. and but, but listen, we got this. Like next mm. year. It was sort of rumored was, to be taking a sabbatical. He was, he was considering it. I, I, I believe that he was. Sit at home for the year and mm. get a suntan like when yeah. his car broke down. Yeah, and and I I think so. Yeah, because start a couple more Photoshop competitions. If <laughs> if Alonso felt that maybe he didn't, he wasn't gonna be uh, giving a car that like, you know that that he'd be at least racing in. Yeah, because they weren't racing to it. Like at the end of the pack, like people were lapping them two two, yeah, two twice, three they, times. They got double yeah. lapped sometimes. Yeah, yeah. so it's it, crazy. It wasn't fun for him, and he's probably in a position where he can. Like the terms of of his contracts and his lawyers, he can probably like 
get away with saying, yeah, I'm still going to get paid <laughs> full salary. I'm just not going to be an F1 and you're not going to have much to say, to say about that. Yeah. And maybe he would have like taken it uh, that year off to like do the uh, the 24 hours of Le Mans or something, you know, some pet projects. Why not? Mm. Get his platinum FIA license. You have to believe like Hulk, that right? Alonso probably is coming back to the grid next year because he at least thinks that McLaren, if anything, yeah, they're going to be fighting in the midfield at least. Mm-hmm. There was talk of button retirement as well, right? Right, yeah. How old the is he? Alonso sabbatical and button retirement. They're both in their 30s, late, oh, late okay. 30s. I'm sure he would be retiring from F1. He's going to do something else, yeah. rail, rail, racing. He's probably just do something else, but he, there's no other seat in F1. He's already, he's been at the top and their car's shit, but they must have been shown something, right? Jesse is 36. So there you go. Um, I think Alonso's 35, but I'm not for sure. He might be 34. 34 yeah oh, so 34 36 some some just, of the older drivers just to correct myself rick hendrick the owner of nascar is american yeah of course he's, he's, he's born in virginia <laughs> yeah no no sane person outside the states would ever i was sitter investing in nascar <laughs> <laughs> well, australians and new zealanders want to be americans though yeah they do, do they, they really, they really I don't do know, i don't know if that's oh the they do oh they do yeah <laughs> they get the hats <laughs> and everything <laughs> V8 Holden <laughs> yeah they hold, hold the Holden oh, um, <laughs> I, I was reading uh, Joe uh, Joe Sayward's blog earlier uh, and he has a pretty funny story well it's really interesting if anything story coming out of India and I guess um, there there are a few F1 headlines coming out of India right now um, talking about these two guys and, and their plight <laughs> um it, it, it kind of shows some earlobes. That guy yeah. on the right looks like such a boss. <laughs> He's like, oh, yeah. that's, fuck that, with me, man. That's that's VJ Mali. But this guy is was richer than him for a lot of. It. But so okay, so this the, these are the two guys that, that had a lot of the ownership of the Force India team. Okay, a team that this year, despite a lot of odds, did re- did it very well. Mm-hmm. Um, so the guy in the in the left, his name is uh, Subrata Roy, or. Yeah, Subrata Roy, and he is the main guy behind the Sahara Group. Okay, right? They own like a bunch of like they own some hotels. They, they, it's kind of like a business group. They own, they they own a bunch of holdings of many 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 right companies and, and different different assets. Um, and Vijay Malia, again, he's he was a he was he was a billionaire. Now he's just a millionaire. Oh. <laughs> a hundred millionaire, many hundred millionaire, but still right. again, uh, King, Kingfisher Airline. Who, who, which Kingfisher hasn't which liquors. hasn't flown for a couple of years, yeah. so right. so his his airline like went bankrupt like has yeah, hasn't even touched off the ground yet. Um, his his liquor consortium that he had uh, mostly most of it got bought by Diageo. Mm-hmm. Um, his business interests are all unraveling. He was one of like the like India's most he, prominent business guys before. Yeah. He was also point. a member of Parliament. Oh, right. Of India. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> I forgot about that. Um, <laughs> but a politician. He, he, he was a, like a, a very prolific magnate before uh, on, on the up and up until uh, it seems 2008 ish. Like all of his ventures really, really went south. Mm. And maybe a bit after. But. He's, he's basically over the last few years, every year, there's a story that he might drop the team. He might sell the team to somebody else. Part of part of that was that then when he brought this other dude. The Sahara guy, the Sahara guy, that happened a couple of years ago. Yeah. Now the Sahara guy, everybody thought that he was also like a pretty solvent, pretty uh, like pretty big uh, Indian investor, and now he's in jail. He's been in jail since March last year. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> like trying to basically from jail, like scrambling to still kind of try to like they're they're letting him kind of run his business in the sense that. Uh, trying to sell it trying to sell as many of his assets and he still can't he can't find buyers for many for many of the things that he that he owned just so he can pay the creditors oh, right wow. yeah it's it's it, it, it's really messed up um the, the situation with this dude both their big empires that whatever they whatever they had are just losing money to previous creditors wow just just losing tons of stuff now one of the, one of the key don't uh, buy stuff with debt people yeah, come on like do your research exactly <laughs> um through daggio though um when daggio bought, bought the liquor brand like 
one of one of the things that they did was sort of lend money, like as a firm company to company, not through the bank, right. uh, to one of uh, Malia's holding companies. Okay. Right? Like the holding companies that, that own his interest in Forest India. Yeah. Um, when that holding company couldn't pay them back, basically what 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 this uh, what Dajo is claiming now in court is or, or was trying to claim I was trying to make the argument is that listen, they owe me $135 million. One of their most valuable assets in, in these two guys, like right now, and these two guys' uh, um, empires and interests is the Formula One team, mm. is for its India. So why don't we say that instead of giving me the money back, you can give me a certain amount of shares and I can, I can control part of the Force India group. This is important because through that is how Diageo was trying to get uh, Aston Martin to, uh, uh, to join F1 and sure. kind, of, kind of come and bring right. Aston Martin as an individual uh, mm -hmm. or as an, as an outside um, party that would take over that and eventually... Um, that would be Dajo's way to to make the money back and maybe even profit in the long in the long term. Mm -hmm. That didn't happen because um, it 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 turns out that Aston Martin maybe is not that crazy about uh, um, associating themselves with the Force India name. Not just yet, they're not gonna go in. They're not gonna jump into F one if there's no like if if there's no uh, chance of winning because it right. could dilute their brand. But and part part of we <clears throat> when this uh, Aston Martin thing sort of went away two or three weeks ago, we yeah. talked about this. Uh, part of Aston Martin, at least their public reasoning mm -hmm. for backing out, is that over the next uh, year or two, they're revamping their entire line. They're refreshing all their models instead of just upgrading them. They're going to be replacing all of their new models, so that probably and especially if it lines up with the revamp the revolution of formula one it works better for them to join in a year of revolution when their company right. is re being a re going through its own revolution yeah like bringing it, up it might be a good match refreshing all the cars but. for sure it might be a big a, uh, a good fit for uh for aston martin in the future but maybe not right now and that was the whole point yeah right. maybe not maybe not at, at, at this point now this dude on the left now trying to like sell his assets and and, and pay his creditors he he what he hasn't been successful he really wants to get out of jail of course <laughs> um so what he wants to apparently one of the things that he wants to do and he asked the courts for permission is to sell his own personal shares of the f1 team mm. um to try to like accumulate with that try to accumulate money and then start like start you know pay for bail for example mm -hmm. and pay and, and and pay for you know to get to get the the, the pros along of like paying his creditors um now the thing is, is that is he you didn't say i don't think he's in jail for non-payment of debt well he's in jail for all kinds of uh like financial like so, or is it fraud like yeah something, yeah something like that like it's it's some I, sort of felony is he uh, well, no, he's because his companies. Yeah, he's he, because he has to be accountable of like all his companies. Oh, being so in he just yeah. steered his. He just borrowed too much money with a, that he had no intention or way of paying back. Yeah, and yeah. and then like his business started to collapse. Pay exactly. it back with you know, pay it back with your time. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah, it's one of those things like pay like six hundred million or go to jail for these many years. Right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so he's trying to basically like accumulate enough money to like make bail and like form some sort of a plan. And part of his strategy now, or he, what he wants to do is sell a bunch of the ho interest in hotels and, and uh, private jets that he owns mm -hmm. and the F1, uh, the F1, or the, the, the Force India shares so that he, so that he's, you know, a, a little bit, you know, give him some more breathing room. But that would mean that his interest in F1 would, terminate completely right and now who's who's looking to buy his stuff which is interesting because <laughs> now we're talking about um actually qatar again coming up to the picture and actually uh. buying his share like his part of the shares now if qatar wants to make that big of an investment because now now we're talking about them like talking about tracks talking about well they have they have a, a very big track they have a Oh, class one track yeah so so actually I, be, I believe it's grade two but it's built for grade one it just doesn't have the certification right so but they, they're hosting a grand prix they're hosting the a moto gp race yeah already yeah so if, if, they're, if they're talking about hosting a grand prix now that's that's their idea part owning a team so if you part on a team that, that also means that you're you can 
you're basically buying your way into the decision making process of F1 if your team is successful enough mm-hmm. because the, that team would get the sixth uh, seat at the F1 strategy group, right? Which is now still Force India. Um, Los and it's, and it's going that's, to that's be. That's the name of the Qatari track. Oh, okay. Yeah. But 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 anyway, Sorry. like the, 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 yeah. there is maybe some clear in the, some clear indications that Qatar is serious about F1. They're mm-hmm. really trying to get their way in. Um, I don't think I'm all that crazy about a race in Qatar. There are actually too many Middle Eastern races already, mm-hmm. like Bahrain and Yas Marina. That's enough for me. I mean, that's yeah. all that it needs to be. Let's I got be nothing honest. against it at all, <clears throat> except. For this track, it looks great, pretty good. Like you can see it on the camera here, maybe. But mm. there's nothing there. There's no facilities. There's no support. Send, send, send there's the no link. no send hotels. Link. You can't see it. Okay. Well, what, type in Losail. Look at it. It's surrounded by. How do you spell it? L O S A I L. Losail. What? Whatever. They've successfully hosted MotoGP back here, but as long as it's a good race. True. Hey, I'm saying let's yeah that that may be like one of the next uh, new races in the coming years, all right? We could yeah, still we could be. still see one of the Qatar races. Uh, another thing that's that's funny that came out of that uh, well the one thing that that's funny that came out of that um, of this whole Force India mess and mm-hmm. uh, and whatever is that recently at the Davos meeting like the the World Economic Forum meets every year in Davos. Um, Raghuram Rajan, the governor of the Refer- uh, Reserve Bank of India, so like their central bank, basically started like did a jab at uh, at Vijay Malia. So Vijay Malia, like he's still like like he he's not longer a billionaire. His business are crumbling, yeah. but he's still known for like being very flamboyant and like hosting like huge lavish parties uh, and like yeah. parading like his possessions around the press in India. <laughs> and he says. <laughs> <laughs> um so so this so Remember this guy last year his mohawk and stuff yeah <laughs> so, so yeah so Earrings, this, this, giant this, diamonds. the governor of the india central bank basically said if you flaunt your birthday bashes while owing the system a lot of money it does seem to suggest to the public that you don't care <laughs> you don't give a shit yeah, i think i remember I, we started talking about this a few months ago too it's kind of being yeah an ongoing thing and he could do to say i think that is the wrong message to send if you're in trouble you should be cutting down your expenses <laughs> <laughs> it's like, come on man everyone knows Smart everyone enough. knows you're not you're not you're not that rich anymore just settle down <laughs> <laughs> but hey i mean for both of them though for both of these dudes i think they've, they're slowly coming to realize that the f1 team is becoming one of their most valuable assets especially since it was able to turn around this year yeah they kicked ass in mexico too they make, yeah they, you know what i mean they got <clears throat> perez is coming to his own right yeah that's true and uh it's hawkenberg <laughs> Right, he kicked ass. You've got two, two great drivers. You brought a shitload of attention to the team winning, winning the Le Mans twenty four hours. Yeah, yeah, no, that, that's a team that you can, as an investment, does it's not looking very bad mm-hmm. right now. Like that team actually has like some future. Yeah, as I'd far like, as the underdog teams, that that's who I like to look to them. They're, especially they came like from from the bottom. Yeah, from, they've been building it up. They haven't given up. They've come ahead. They've moved up and up and up right they have some smart people working there clearly yeah yeah absolutely i, I like force india mm-hmm. shame in the way in the waiting list for sure yeah. argentina etc yeah. um one less okay so before we we went live uh a few hours ago um you, you were talking about how uh lewis hamilton has the has these uh pieces of artwork right 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 <laughs> uh he's he, he owns like a couple rembrandt i believe rembrandt yeah yeah. Uh, one, one second, I'll find it. Either way, I mean, wait, he's yeah. got uh, some Remingtons. He said oh. a really nice Monet <laughs> and uh, a Salvador Dali. Jesus Christ! A nice mixture. He said makes yeah. him quote safe for the future. That's a quote. <laughs> and uh, as well as he has some classic cars and property. Actually, I got a really big story for those that don't know. I want to talk about it next week. Uh, for those of you who didn't know, Lewis Hamilton's actually got some Granada and roots. From he's from Granada. Oh shit! But uh, that's his dad. His dad is from Granada, right? Yeah. And he he says he can be a citizen of Granada if he if he wishes to or something. Right, but I don't think the current citizens of Granada would uh, like him to show up there. <laughs> well, we'll talk uh, next Ra- week. Uh, Racing Granada. <laughs> yeah, I want I want to like round out the story and talk about it next week. But uh, he's 
basically in a legal back and forth with the federal government of Granada. It's pretty <laughs> interesting. Um, we'll, unexpected we'll, for Lewis. More on that next week. Mm. Uh, but while right. we were, while we were, that's one, one of his large investments is some property for sure. And yeah, and he's, and he's he's been investing because he wants to be he, he wants to be more than just the F one driver that goes and takes his F one money and puts it in a bank and lives in. Um, uh, in Monaco or Switzerland, so somewhere where they don't tax uh, mm -hmm. your income. He so does live can, in Monaco a bit, but but he doesn't get that Zonda there. Yeah, but nice he, that purple Zonda. He, he clearly wants to do more, and he's he's definitely been told. But he's he's got his advisors or whatever, or you know the people that are that, that are close to him now, not the people that were close to him before, but the people that are close to him now right. uh, are encouraging him to become more of an entrepreneur as well, because that that is basically how it's become. Yeah, you're an F1 driver and. Your career is, you know, if, if, if you have a, a bright career, no matter how bright it is, it's always bound to be kind of a short career because the mm. skill set involved in driving an F1 car, like, don't really, like, you know, they, they kind of age poorly. Yeah. Let's put it that yeah, way. You, right. know, you can't be, in this, in this day and age, you can't be 40 and driving an F1 car. Even if you're Senna, like, you probably find a lot of things, you know, challenging. Right. And, and even, like, you, you know what I mean? Like, you have to be a young man now right. to drive an F1 car. Um, and in that short amount of time, you can make a lot of money if you drive well enough, mm -hmm. which Lewis have been, has been doing, and you can amass a small fortune. Yeah. yeah right? Um, if, depending on where you live, and in most places in the Western world, which is where these drivers are from, mm -hmm. you get taxed a lot for your income. And, for, and just, just for having the, just the, money, having that, money, the, the yeah. money that you have, it's going to get taxed. And if you're not bringing in more money every year, which is what happens to F1 drivers. They have that career, it ends, and then they're not, I mean, they, they, they can hope to be presenters maybe, but that's not going to pay nowhere near yeah, right. as much as being an F1 driver. Yeah. Um, but most of them are not. Most of them just make their money in F1 and then like, they're, they're given two, two, two options, right? Like just live on the name if your name was big enough and yeah. just live in somewhere like Monaco where you're not going to get taxed and hope to make enough, to have made enough money to last you for the rest of your days. Yeah. Or become an entrepreneur, which is what you know. Nicky Lauda used to own a couple, or he's even looking at buying an airline now. But he he, he yeah, owned a couple. He, he owned two airlines yeah. and sold them for profit. Yeah, he's so he, yeah he Jesus. was he's a very cunning businessman and yeah. and, and, he's a, and he is also a pilot. He's oh, he's got God. his full certifications too, fly by wire, Jesus. et cetera, et cetera. Remember we looked at his private. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He bought a private jet, which is actually about the size of your apartment here. He's got uh, one living room area, a leather sofa, and like an 80-inch television. Oh, I remember that. Remember yeah, yeah, yeah. Brass, brass amenities in the bathroom on the plane. Yeah. Plus, he can pilot it. It's fly-by-wire. <laughs> Brand new. It's a Bombardier Canadian plane. Uh, but yeah, it, it, Badass plane, though. So, so you, can, you, you, can become a, uh, you can hope to become an entrepreneur. Or, yeah. you know, you can do this sh Jody Schachter, uh, Jody Schachter, Jody Schachter uh, F1 champ from the late 70s mm -hmm. uh he owns um i think it's a it's a, sh uh, a sheep farm somewhere in the uk Shit. you know whatever like he's mm -hmm. but he's he, he's he, doing something with it he's doing something with it he, yeah. you know, he's not just sitting on it he's like he's a he's a farmer now yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh but that's cool you know that's what maybe that's what he wanted to do instead of like sitting on his money so cl clearly louis, louis hamilton is looking to be like more of the entrepreneur and maybe right. trying to look to to do it big like you know like jc kind of yeah. uh, is an entrepreneur <clears throat> right uh <laughs> he looks up to those guys for sure and you know and drake and whatever with his clothing light so <laughs> we, we look at hamilton he's almost more of a renaissance man even than an entrepreneur he's got this granada beach looking at entering fashion he's got a part but those, Play, those playing are all... himself in the Zoolander too. Oh, it's, is he's, he playing himself? He's playing himself. Oh, he's playing himself. Okay, I didn't know that. Which is pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. His, his music career. He's got some singles yeah. that he's released or par partially released. But it's kind of crazy, right? What, what attracted my attention is that listen. So when got hundred year old paintings. But clearly, th those paintings are they're, they're not. I mean, I don't know like how much of a of an art appreciator like you'd have to be to actually really like like say like listen that that painting is worth that much that, that much money or whatever or like to actually like really like be able to say like i own i own a dali because this not just because the that dali for me mostly is a repository of a ton of cash and that right that is what a lot of people right. with, with with that kind of problem where you like where you make where you, you make a lot of money all at once and want it to last you buy artwork you right. buy you buy jewels you buy a ton of diamonds because that's that's money that's 
that's, that's set. not going to really change. Right, yeah, that's yeah, that's, yeah. that's that's kept there. It's easy to transport. Yeah, like way easier to transport than like just showing up at an airport with like a, a fucking piece of luggage full of cash. Yeah, obviously, and and international <laughs> bank transfers also are illegal expensive. to travel with a lot of cash. Yeah, in, certain, in a lot of cases, depends yeah. where you're going. But if and how if, much cash? If it comes to crunch time, you can just like you know fill up a, a water bottle with like a bunch of diamonds and nobody's yeah. going to question it or you know roll up a piece of you know roll up a deli and fucking flee <laughs> whatever you know <laughs> if something crazy is happening yeah. you can you can still do that um my advice for for lewis would be that what a lot of people th- that 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 do that they get into like buying artwork and and jewelry don't don't consider or don't even realize is that the markets where those things trade are just as corrupt and just as prone to bubbles yeah. as you know the housing market a for lot of example them. fakes yeah. Yeah, the, 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 so the, you hear that all the time like, once or twice a year it's no, like I, this famous painting turned out to be fake and yeah. the people Nobody the people knew. that are, no but okay so you know the, the the libor scandal in london where um banks basically like people from, people are working that worked in banks colluded to like to rig the um the international um currency Currency exchange market market in their favor right Mm -hmm. you can do that now like it's been proven that you can you can do that with gold because the the main people that are like the big trading houses of gold they can talk each other they can can talk to each other just as much just as much we talked about this last week about africa evolving just with cell phones just that's all you need uh, yeah but right you can do it with oil you need a lot of guns though well but 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 exactly like in in the art in the art world there are like the the people that are actually like the appraisers for these like very 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 expensive paintings you'd be stupid to believe that they're not in cahoots with each other yeah absolutely. right that, that that they can that they cannot turn the market yeah. whichever way they want it and same with jewelry whichever and, way they yeah. turn their nose yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, the jewelry is the same man right now machines are like are capable of making better rubies than rubies that you can get in nature better emeralds and stuff mm-hmm. like that the only the only the only reason why uh, diamonds are as expensive as they are. It's not because they're rare, not anymore. Mm-hmm. It's because somebody says so in Antwerp, Belgium. The next <laughs> revolution for cell phone screens beyond this gorilla glass is sapphire, because they can now grow crystals better than nature. Yeah. And actually, I believe on this phone, this is one of the this phone's already two years old now. But they started with this little lens cover for the camera on the back is yeah. that's crystal. That's Whoa. a sapphire sapphire crystal. It's unscratchable, but it's also it's brittle though they have to figure it out this my lens cap is cracked oh shit <laughs> yeah. so but, so my, my advice yeah, was gonna type, be all types of gems yeah. that can grow them though. all all of these markets if you if you are lewis hamilton or if you are a young budding f1 driver with a future yeah and you all of a sudden happen into a bunch of money that you need to keep lewis keep, your, and keep you, driving i guess yeah keep keep driving or you know <laughs> Invest in Bitcoin, really. Yeah, <laughs> it's Bitcoin is gonna get you further than uh, than diamonds and, and uh, Monet's. I think it is <laughs> the thing that's gonna get him the furthest is his skill. Yeah, his skill. The, <clears throat> I want to <clears throat> segue quick. This Gerhard Berger quote. Gerhard Berger is been uh, driver. Yeah. yeah, he's been uh, kissing Nico's ass for the past week or two. Oh my god, he's got these uh, did a couple interviews saying. Uh, uh, Nico Rosberg is insanely good. I still believe he's one of the best. He gave Michael Schumacher trouble when they were teammates, yeah, but et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> the, the, the main quote I want to get from this is that he believes that um, if Rosberg had had a different teammate at Mercedes the last two years, that he would have been champion. Oh, Jesus. So his quote at the, at the end is, if Rodber- Rosberg can rattle Hamilton emotionally then he has a chance this year oh my god he said if he has a strong first half of the season then hamilton would have more problems with rosberg's success than vice versa that's a direct quote so his idea for rosberg to beat hamilton this year is to get him emotional before these races (laughs) or at least in the start of the season and make him doubt himself or something and uh (laughs) <laughs> sort of kick his ass that way I see a fat this chance is, of that happening this is his yeah. public advice for Nico Rosberg wow. we saw him last week with the uh, bending his neck in the torture chamber and shit. <laughs> um, quickly before we end how old was that James Allen article about Force India that you were looking at oh uh, that's is it the Force India like oh, just the, the Jose word 
Yeah, sorry, sorry. Yeah, just say what came out today. Came out today. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because I, I was just searching uh, for Cindy on the news. Yeah. For Cindy is trending all over Twitter, and uh, yeah. Here, you, here's a detail: forty-two and a half percent of Force India is owned by Sahara, which you would assume. I guess that would probably be a controlling stake. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Most likely. Yeah. So yeah, for sale after eight years. So they might not be. Aston Martin, but they might be Qatar. Anything else? Yeah, <laughs> Force Qatar. Any, any, anything? Yeah, Force Qatar. <laughs> Qatar India, Qatar India. <laughs> yeah. DJ. All right, see you guys later. Yeah. Flatoutfever dot com. Hit subscribe. Thank you. Mm-hmm.